Uh, I call this meeting of the uh, Brookfield Select Board to order at 6.19 p.m. Uh, on today, Thursday, August 24th. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see. Kelly, we didn't have any announcements today, do we? All right. Not unless they're on the sheet underneath the one on top. Nope. I don't see any. Just an old copy of the agenda. All right, so that moves on. Do you have an announcements folder? She might have put them in her folder. I don't think so. It's Karen's on vacation. No, I've got a correspondence, but I don't see any announcements. Okay. Uh, let's see. And uh, report on warrants, which we don't have. I don't have the numbers. No, we don't have the numbers. Okay. So we can just defer the report. We can do a uh, bigger warrant report in two weeks, right? Yes. <coughs> That's fine. We'll get it. We'll get it out. All right. So that brings us to the first item on the agenda: a hearing for the liquor license transfer uh, regarding a transfer of license. Um, so I declare the uh, I declare the uh, hearing on this matter now open. So Kelly, is it us asking questions? I've, this is my first one. Beth? Oh, it's been a dog's age since I've done a liquor license. <laughs> so I can give a summary. Just give, a summary, give, a, summary. give yeah. a summary of the application <laughs> and, uh, and uh, the sure. locale. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Board. My name is Matthew Porter. I'm an attorney at Beer and D. John Filippo in Southeastern Mass. Along with me is Jagisha Patel. Uh, Ms. Patel is one of the principals of uh, MJ Swami Bapa LLC, which is the applicant before you today. Also with us is Twinkle Patel. Ms. Patel is also a 5% shareholder. She'd be the life. Excuse me? Would you slow down just a smidge? Oh, I'm really not used to taking minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. that. And, 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 sir, you hear the rate of speed at which I speak? Yeah. I listen at the same rate of speed. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside with me today uh, is Jagisha Patel. Ms. Patel is uh, one of the principals of MG Swami Bapa LLC, which is the applicant before you. Uh, in addition to Ms. Patel, Ms. Twink Patel is here as well. Ms. Patel would be the proposed license manager, uh, meaning she'd be the person uh, equipped with the day-to-day -day operations at the store 40 hours per week. Uh, so it's a very straightforward transfer. There's no changes to the business whatsoever. No changes to the structure, no changes to the hours. Uh, again, this is for Bay Path Spirits at 21 Maple Street. Um, this is an experienced uh, operating group. Uh, they've both grown up in the industry. Their families own several of the liquor store locations. Uh, so this is an opportunity to purchase their first store. Um, but like I said, there will be no changes from a day-to-day -day operation standpoint. Uh, so certainly with that, I can answer any questions that the board may have, and Mrs. Patel and Mrs. Patel can as well. Okay. So when you so effectively there there will be new ownership, but from a it's like if you didn't know the new ownership change, you would expect to be um, minimal change. From Correct. The customer perspective. Yeah, there's I mean, yeah. Obviously, they'll run it a little differently. Yeah, yeah, okay. they'll, they'll bring their own expertise in. Um, you know, probably stock different inventory, try to bring in you know their own touch to it. But as far as hours and operation are concerned, there's no changes to the to the business overall. Okay. And then um, for. Uh, uh, for the for the uh, uh, to the uh, qualifications of the um, of the managing operator. Um. Yes, yeah, so um, Ms. Patel. Sure, Ms. Patel, yeah, she grew up in the industry. Her parents have owned several businesses over the years. She's worked in the stores. Uh, she's currently a clerk at one of the stores mm -hmm. right now. She has a very clean record. She is alcohol tip certified, as is Jagisha Patel, meaning mm -hmm. they've taken all of their alcohol certifications. Uh, so they certainly understand the rules and responsibilities that come along with that. Um, in addition to that, from a safeguarding standpoint, they will have a scanning machine in place. They use state-of-the-art scanning machines, and their policies generally card everybody. They'll scan it right through and just make sure there's no underage sales occurring at all. Okay. Mr. So. Chair, through you, can I see the, the paperwork that was submitted while you're yeah. talking? There you go. Thanks. Okay. And is this, the, is this the first time as the managing or responsible party for, uh, for Ms. Patel? This would be her first store that okay. she would be managing, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Just want to... Yes. Understand the situation. Sure. Okay. I I actually used my reading glasses to read stuff. Eh? That's why we put them there for you. I know. Oh, you brought your own. Today. I did. I actually brought my own today. Well, you can double them up if it gets blurry. Okay. 
Okay. It looks like all of the all of the prerequisites are met. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the, the only other question I have is that I expect since there's a liquor license involved, the uh, Alcohol Beverage Control Commission at the state level is also involved. Uh, uh, I, I think for transfers, that's not uh, necessary. I, I could explain that process. Yeah, that'd sure. be great. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, so the, the application that is before the town is actually the state application. How it works in Massachusetts is the full ABCC application is submitted to the town or municipality upon your approval your office then sends that application up to the state. So they're reviewing the same exact application, okay. uh, which is, takes about four to six weeks for the state to get through it. Once a state approves a license, uh, they will let the town know that the state approval is in, and at that point, the, the town would issue the liquor license to the new owner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a sequential. Yep. But we, but we go first. You're first. And it makes sense. That, I mean, someone's got to go first. So I'll make a motion we approve the transfer to license. Second. All right. Um, any more debate? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of transferring the uh, license, uh, approving the license transfer request. I think uh, you just have to open it up to the town. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, okay. we've got a, uh, yeah, we've got the motion <laughs> for a second. Is there any, any questions or, cons I'm sorry, that's your meeting. No, no, no. Thank you. Um, uh, are there uh, any, uh, would anyone in here at the hearing uh, care to comment on the matter at hand? Are they buying the real estate as well? They are, yes. Okay, so the whole package is... Yes. Yeah. And just so the audio picks up, the question was, are the uh, applicants um, purchasing the uh, real estate at that site? And the, uh, the answer to that was yes. Does that come with the billboards? Is that on the same property or no? That I can't speak to. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Holcraft, were you asking about the billboards that face um, the eastbound traffic on Route yes. 9 on the, uh, on the border of the uh, old Brookfield Motors property, what Tassie owns now? Those are the ones? Yes. Okay. They don't want, they want Tassie's? I, I don't know who's they're on. I'm just saying they, but I the see them on the edge of Tassie's property. Yeah. I just don't know if they're on his edge or on the edge of the neighbor's property. I don't mm -hmm. think they want you to use them. <laughs> I've got my own sign here. <laughs> <laughs> it has all he needs. <laughs> all right. Um, are there any more questions uh, here? All right. Seeing as there's not, we have a uh, motion to approve the transfer and second. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. The uh, transfer is approved. Three nothing. Thank you very much. Appreciate Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need anything, or is it all going to ABCC? I spoke to it Karen. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. So she says she's going to be back on Monday. Okay. Yeah, so she'll take so basically a portal that it gets submitted through like yeah. Yeah. So you guys don't have to do anything at this point. There's like an LLA, like does a there's a signature. Yeah, yeah, so it's in there. Right. It probably it's has a sign here. little sign yeah. sticky on it. Yeah, right. I do. I do have a piece of paper with a legal sign yes. with a sign here thing. Right. Yeah, I think all. all the, right. I think the whole board has to sign it. All right, then I'll get it. Thank you. Thanks all. And then when you're done with the packet, just hand it down this way, so. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. 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 Welcome to town. Thank you. Hey, you need There we go. Can I borrow one? Take one. I don't use those. All right. Agenda. Stuff. I know. I usually am. Beth, did you sign? I did. All right. Good. Uh, Back this way. That way, please. Oh. <laughs> it's like, if it goes to me, it's just going to die. <laughs> we don't want that. All right, next up on the agenda, the uh, Central Street Project. Ryan, would you join us, please? How you doing, Ryan? Good, how are you? Doing well. All right. Um, we, rec we received your, uh, your written summary, yep. and I know that uh, I had some questions that I sent to you. Yep. And so, um, and we discussed some of them, but I'm going to, I'm intending to ask them again to make sure that they, uh, that they get covered in the, the record. Yep. And, uh, but I guess I will invite the other board members to go first since I've already had a crack at Ryan. Um, um so uh, Ryan the, the first question I had and 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 this question really came to us 
and, and I should have reviewed my email. I had, I had meant on reading all the detail that's in there, and I'll be very frank. I did not do all of my homework. So if a lot of this is retread and you've already answered it in writing, then forgive me up yep. front. Okay. Um, so my understanding, when we went over the two plans very far up front, was that we selected the one that actually maintained parking for the preponderance of Central Street. And I don't recall there being bike lanes down where we have them painted currently because we had opted for the plan that had the multi-use path in lieu of the bike pads because parking is such a premium in our tidy little town. Yes. So can you help me understand yeah. what happened there? So one of the plans showed a uh, shared use path. You remember that? Yes. So the shared use the shared use path counts as a bike lane, and that's why we did that from um, um, halfway through halfway from the um, Pleasant Street to Common Street is okay. where the shared use path is. Okay. There was no getting around not having a bike lane beyond that towards the school. Okay. We, we had to have a bike lane in that area because there, there's no other room to do any other option. It's a requirement of the Complete Streets yeah. grant that you have some bike lane. Okay. Um, the shared use path, I, I think, is what you understood. Yeah, I thought it went all the way down. Would, the, all the way the, down. would all yeah. be all the way down to the intersection. That was my understanding on it. So, um, if that was possible, we would have done it. Um, Brian, can you clarify the difference between a bike lane and a shared use path? Because yeah. I'm hearing those and I'm vague. So a bike lane is generally within the road. Okay. And a shared use path is a combination pedestrian sidewalk and bike lane. Okay. It, so and that's why it's wider. It's a, it's a, it, it, you could, I, could, I should think of it as an extra wide sidewalk so there's room for bicycles. That's correct. Or that's a fair way to think of it. Okay, thank yep. you. That's helpful. Yeah. And so I'm guessing in front of town hall, it's a shared use path because we because there are the parking spaces there. That's and then further mm -hmm. east, it's a bike lane and not a shared use path. Yeah. It, it's basically we're going to have one or the other along the entire stretch of the road. Yeah. Okay. So now don't confuse. There's parking shoulders uh, like down by your house and on the opposite side of this across from the town hall. That's not a bike lane. I think that was part of the confusion. That's a parking shoulder. Okay. And okay. And my yeah, question no, was that might be part of the confusion. Can, then, can, uh, excuse me, Brad. Yeah. Then, can you clarify what sections of Central Street are have a bike lane on them? From Pleasant Street down. Pleasant Street. Oh, Pleasant Street. That's the street that goes down Heading to East. Mill Street. Yeah, correct. Heading down to the school. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. From Pleasant Street all the way. To I the actually line. brought the. Um, okay. This will help you guys, I think. section of Pleasant Street. Oh, yep. Here's where the bike lane begins, and here's where the shared use path starts also. It kind of goes off the road, onto the sidewalk, and down. OK. So, so that is the official striping detail, mm -hmm. the paint markings. Yeah, and I can see here on the south side of Central Street, there is an area marked parking shoulder, which is in the roadway, but that's the white stripe on the other side of the street. OK. Yeah, I was I was not clear on that. I was um, yeah yeah with the uh, I thought the white line indicated um, bike lane and there was a bike lane across the street. Yeah, it is a little bit of confusing, but the bike lane is only designated by the little bicycle symbol. That's okay. Made. If you don't see that, it's not a bike lane. Got it. Um, and one of the questions that I had brought up before. And I see it here in the plan that it says seven feet for the parking shoulder. Yes. Did you take a look and remeasure it by chance? No, I believed your measurement. All right. <laughs> I did believe your measurement. What'd you get? And, uh, uh, six feet, eight inches. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. It's narrow. Um, but we, you know, we only have so much road width. Um, so, and we had to fit all this in. But I think 
the issue that I'm concerned about is the liability, and there was an incident that occurred today. I don't know if you were notified at all. No, I didn't know about it. So somebody made a complaint because they came to park at the town hall. They were parking over at the shoulder. She wanted to make sure she was within the lane, and in doing that, she um, sliced through, sliced her, through her tire on the curbside and, and has a complaint that the parking isn't wide enough to hold a vehicle. And I don't know if we're removed from any liability for something like that, but it's a concern. Well, it depends on the size of the vehicle <laughs> and your, your ability to use mirrors. I, I don't know what the <laughs> suggestion is. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't know if there's something you guys want to do. I, I, don't, I don't know if we need to contact the painting. I don't know. So the, the, <laughs> the painting company went by the engineered plans, which is in your hand. Yeah. Um, the engineer is who designed the, the striping. Right. The painting. And from what I saw online, parallel parking, I don't know if that's different than parking shoulder, is supposed to be a minimum eight feet. But hopefully engineers, I don't know if we want to contact the engineers or can get clarification on that. On whether it meets spec? Right. <clears throat> okay. What spec? Um, on the mass.gov website, it says eight feet for parallel parking spaces. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. but you'd, you'd have, have to, to make it, it one way. The question yeah. You'd have to make the road one way. I didn't have a problem. Yeah, but the question right. becomes is that a requirement or a recommendation? Tire, it's on me. Right. And well, and, and I'm kind of of that opinion too, because my car, like a yeah, my, my, my car, if I, if my car, if I park it along the line, both of mine fit, but if I had a SUV, obviously it might not, so. And that's what this was. So, so, so I mean, the lines are like a recommendation. It's not like you <laughs> get a, a parking ticket for parking on the line. Oh, no, I know, no, I understand that. It's yeah. too literal, it's, it's a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, Ryan, yep. with regards to the, the project, when the project went out to bid, there was, there was a base portion of the project and there was an ad alternate portion of the project. Correct. Ad alternate is the right term, right? Yes. Okay, which um, I bucket as, it was an option that the town could take. Now, what was the scope of the ad alternate? The ad alternate was to, to construct and install a sidewalk from Common Street to Sherman Street. On which the was, south side of Central Street, across from Town Hall. Yep. Okay. Which was not existing. It was okay. added. All right. And when and when and when did we ex when did we decide to go with that to to put that ad alternate into the project? Basically, when the bids came in within the budget that we were expecting, the engineer's estimate. At what point were we within the budget? Are you as far as I know, the whole time. Are we not? How much was the budget? What, what was the bid? How much was the bid? I guess. Um, six ninety, six hundred ninety-six thousand and fifteen dollars. What was the total cost? Uh, uh, through me, please. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, nine hundred thirty-eight thousand three hundred ninety-four dollars. Now, there was two different things that happened here. We had a um, contracted. Um, with a con contract with precise paving for a portion of the project, and then we completed the paving within the town, under the town's road materials, bid, the milling and paving. And we did that to save money. So uh, according to the estimate I see here, the project estimate was for a touch over $1 million, yeah. which included uh, police detail, um, the construction estimate from the engineer, um, an estimate for, ma for mass broken stone <clears throat> building paving estimate. Was that an estimate how much it would cost the town to do the paving? That's correct. Okay, and then the, the engineer's cost. Yep. And so all those together was $1 million, and the final cost of the project, uh, according to your numbers, was $938,000 and, $938, and not quite $400. Yep. So, 
we went with the we went with the um, with the add alternate one um, at the inception of the project, and that was in and that was baked into the contract that the that was signed. That was the six ninety six fifty. Okay, that was the whole cost. Right, and. I believe add alternate one was in the forty-five to fifty thousand dollar range. I've yeah, I've yeah roughly. I've seen the number. I just forget exactly what it was. Yeah, I think I don't have that wait, number in front of me. I I found what my number is. There you go. It was forty-nine thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Yep. Right. So I think one of the questions that that I have is when the project was presented to the select board, um, was it ever how how was that broken out, was it broken out that the contract included at alternate number one, or was it just presented as a single project? As, as a, I think this is all we're doing. I think it was presented as the entire project because that's, that was the goal, in my opinion, was to do the whole project. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what I planned on doing. Then, then what was the purpose of carving out that the, portion of the project the, okay. into at alternate one? The ad alternate was for bidding purposes, basically, so that if the bids came in much higher than expected, we could cut something off to still do the project and not have to redo the bidding process because the bidding process would cost, that would have a cost yeah. too to redo it. Yeah. It gave us a sacrificial portion of the project that yeah. we could just sort of say, the whole thing's costing too much, cut this part out, and we can still fit into our budget. Yeah. Our and, and at this point, we had um, we had been awarded grants, a, a complete streets and a shared streets grant. We had the money sitting there, it was ours. So it was important to me that we could do the project because I knew that there wasn't much other. Um, yeah. According to your report, we, the grants totaled uh, $556,000 and, and a little more. Yep. Okay. And so based on the estimate, that left us about $450,000 of um, short. We, we'd have to find another funding source that, since it wasn't covered by grants. Yep. Okay. And so, I mean, and so that was chapter nine. Yeah, and, nine. I, and I think that may have been part of what was a challenge for me is that I think when we voted the contract, and I think I had it stuck in my head, it was that 696 with it, with there being maybe some missed opportunity at structuring it in a way to make it clear that we had another $300,000 committed as part of the project. That's, I, get, I got the feeling that could have been what happened from, from looking things over. And so, and so I think that's something that. So I, I have minutes from a selectman's meeting that I came mm -hmm. to that Mm -hmm. uh, what's it, the date? it made me under the impression that yeah. the rest of the ARPA money was to be used to complete Central Street after the water, the water project was done. Okay. Um, what's the date of the meeting? February 1st, 2022. Okay. I, yeah, I see here in the minutes, there's a, a statement in the minutes, Ms. Coughlin entertained a motion to designate ARPA funds for the town's upcoming water main project and Central Street project. Mr. Joliker so moved, Ms. Coughlin seconded, so voted. Right, and, uh, right, but at the time, there, were no there was no numbers in that, and it was mm -hmm. not intended okay. to be a blank check. There were numbers presented at that meeting, but I don't know why they didn't get included in the minutes at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, um, do we know what date the bids were opened? Do you know off the top of your head, or roughly? Specifically, we may not had numbers at that point because really is that is that date that prior, prior to? That's way prior. To wait, that was way prior. To oh yeah, the no, bid, I know. So. No, I'm I'm looking ahead to other minutes that discuss right. this matter. So, and I I do want to just like make one statement. One of the reasons why we did the now now that I'm looking at the date, I remember why we were doing what we were doing. So fundamentally, you can't go out to bid unless you have a reasonable expectation that you'll be able to pay what the bid comes back. You don't necessarily have to take any of the bids, but you mm -hmm. have to have a reasonable expectation that you have a funding source for it. Right. You, you can't solicit bids and hope the money magically appears. Correct. 
So in order to, I think, I think we were looking at it at that point from a standpoint of, um, in, to, to facilitate that process mm -hmm. that we would earmark some of the ARPA money and see what it came back versus what the, the grant, available grant money was. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear. Right. That was that vote was for the purposes of going out the bid. It wasn't necessarily a, pro, a, a blank check to approve, you know, whatever ARPA money was required to close the gap. Because mm -hmm. if that was the case, you wouldn't have all those other votes. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm looking at a I'm looking at the uh, an excerpt from the minutes on June 14th, and um, one the bid was open June 2nd. June 2nd. Yes. Oh, thank you. So this this meeting was after the bids were opened. Yeah. And it says, uh, Mr. Pomperian told the board he estimated the total project, co total cost of the project to be $850,000. So, which uh, seems, uh, which I don't see is quite aligned with the $1 million yeah, estimate. Yeah. So I'd like to, uh, uh, do you have any? I don't know. Okay. Don't know. I mean, my we had a bid in at that point we had opened the bid and the bid was for six hundred ninety six thousand dollars or so from precise paving and we had a projected cost from I'm guessing at that point we only had a projected cost from mass bro uh, mass broken stone because we hadn't done the paving yet yeah I okay. mean those numbers could be a little misconstrued because I did have a chapter 90 request in for 140 mm -hmm. So maybe I was saying that I need 850, including the ARPA and in the grant money. Oh, but I, I don't know the context. Okay, how that's, that was discussed. That's, that's, that's fine. I, I mean, I'm. I mean, also looking at the numbers, I would say based on if you added up the precise paving cost, the police detail cost, and the estimate for mass broken stone, you come out around 850. And so, it's like so. To my mind, there are a couple different ways to get broken up, but I think fundamentally, in that. We were not the board at that time, and Beth, you can talk. You were there, so if I'm mis if I'm putting something out there that didn't happen, it seems like Ryan might have been talking about how much the work would cost, not the whole project. And the board was thinking it was a, a project cost, not a construction cost, because on top of the project, you've got your engineering costs. On top of your construction costs, you have your engineering costs. Yeah, I think we've got a lot of lessons learned that we need to, to, yep. to talk about. And I think one of them specifically is, is, is I'm not taking anything from anybody relative to a vote without a piece of paper with their plan in front of us in all aspects of it ever again, period. I would, can I just that. ask a question? Yeah. Did the outcome of this project put the town in a bad position? So I would consider it an opportunity cost scenario Ryan so there was we had a, a certain amount and we're not spent through it yet and we have some other things earmarked for it for the ARPA money okay um, I, I think where the challenge is in spite of the I think in spite of the uh, public meeting and in spite of going over the plans I think in the effort of wanting this project being way overdue to get done. I think that we missed some opportunities to recognize the impact to the community. So I think the focus was on the project and the project execution and not necessarily about doing as thorough a job on, on impact. So then when you're at, in a scenario where you both have a sense of having spent more than what was actually verbally authorized and have people upset with the results, it makes it like, it, it, it does, I don't know if we put the, the town in a bad position. I mean, financially, the town is strong, right? Uh, overall, we, we've been able to execute a number of things that have been in our backlog for years, right? But if we're gonna wait to do them, we need to make sure we get them. Like, Kind of the way that people have in their heads and it's that have you ever seen that project plan thing about computer programming where it's like what you wrote the requirements for is like 
a tire swing, and what you get is this like <laughs> really like like I know which one you're talking backwards about. sort of thing. I feel like we're almost in that scenario where on paper it looked good, on paper it looked right, and then we we get this beautiful million dollar project delivered, and everybody hates it, right? Man, that's disappointing to me. Yeah, that's really that's disappointing. No. Well, it's yeah, up to him whether to take the yeah. comment or not. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, it's I mean, and I'm, I mean, I say I wasn't here for the planning of the project, and where I live, the uh, details of the Central Street project weren't particularly relevant to my day-to-day -day life, so I wasn't paying that much attention. Um, Ms. Chafee, you have a question? Yeah, you know, I've lived here pretty much my whole life. I don't love. I, I don't love what was done. I would like to see it go right back to the way it was. Right? Finished, new, but to the way it was. Because I yeah. like Brookfield the way I remember it as a kid. It doesn't look like that. However, as I grilled Ryan over it, he says we couldn't get the grant. Mm. We couldn't get the funding. And we wouldn't have been able to do it. Yep. So based on that, that's, that's one fact. But then the other fact, the selectmen has quite a bit of fault here because you're saying you didn't know what the funds were. Like, how do you not know? Like, we got one bit of 696,000 that I just said, but like, and you knew about that, right? right? But why didn't you know about the rest? And how come, like, you guys are the approving authority. I'm not sure who was here at the time, so I'm not trying to blame, but it's good constructive criticism the next time. And you, you may- Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to alleviate the, the board of having some of the responsibility yeah. here. However, we, all, we get the communication that we get, right? Yeah. And I think this really brings forward the fact that we need to get better. We need to know what we're spending before you spend it. Right, yeah. right. And, and, and how did that happen? Like, how did, like, I mean, we can, Attack, but I mean, well, yeah, the, I mean, the three selectmen are really right. the ones that. So, so fundamentally, what we thought we were spending is what we voted on the 14th of June, which was the $850,000, right? Okay. That's that's what fundamentally was our understanding. That's what showed up in our minutes, right? The piece of it that appears to be missing, right, was that was that, and, and it sounds like the conversation between Ryan and, and uh, Tom has, has gotten there, is that there was a portion of the project funded, funded under Chapter 90 that wasn't functionally included in the, the numbers that we were talking from the standpoint of that project management. So overall, so. was there any big numbers that the project over, like went over other than that got missed? Was there any other big numbers to like a million dollar project? I would, I would say, for, for, from what I have seen, I would not say, the, the project came in at budget. We achieved our goals at budget. The, the big concern here is that it's not, what was delivered is not quite what some people expected and it's different, it's like close, but just not different enough that some people don't like it. And the other issue is the funding, is the thought, well, it's like the project came in based on the estimates I see here, but I think there was a communication issue, so, that these, so from what I understand, the select board thought that only this much of the ARPA money was going to be needed to get the project done, and we needed this much. And that was something that we weren't expecting, it wasn't on our radar, mm -hmm. and so when Ryan came and asked for it, it was sort of like, what, wait, I thought this was, I thought we had set aside all the money, and, and Ryan, and that's and that's a communication issue. And communication is a two-way street. But I and so, I'm but I'm just telling you that when that request came in, that's and I think you caught it is that we were just like, what What do you mean you need more money? We didn't. And that's when sort of the the gap in communication started to be uncovered. It's like, but that was earlier this year. It's like I don't maybe it was, I think it was April. Yeah, and the project never should have gone as long as it did. But mm -hmm. there was issues with getting the granite, which carried us through a winter. Mm -hmm. it, it would have right. been much quick, easier but, if it was shorter time frame. Yes, and then and then you mentioned the uh, the granite, the, the lack of a granite did cause us to have to lower the utility structures for the winter for so that the highway and then re-raise it. it. And then re -raise it. it was, was that a big impact on the project cost? 
not really. It was kind of a wash because there was other things like we saved money on the police detail. We didn't use the whole estimated cost. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. it was like twenty. 23,000 instead of 52, so. Yeah. So it's, it's like, so, so it increased the cost of the project, but savings elsewhere kept the whole project on budget. That's right. But it was an unexpected expense. Yes. Okay, yeah, and, and, and it makes sense. It's like, yeah, if the grant, if you can't pay before winter, you gotta be able to plow the streets and, and you can't have the manholes two inches up. Yeah, right? there wasn't getting, any getting around that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The road was already milled, mm -hmm. so. No, that's, I, I, I understand and I, it's like we did the we, we did what we could with what we had. If the grant had come in on time, like you said, this if it was available. Was a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, one moment. And so I mean, so I, I as I said, I I'm, I concur with uh, with Beth's recommendation that for large projects like this, we should have um, the the select board needs to be diligent in ensuring that it has been fully informed of the expected funding sources for things like this so that we don't, so that problems, issues like this don't pop up or surprise that the, that the project cost, that the project that gets completed consistent with, with the estimates that were made in the beginning are then that the funding has already been identified and we're not scrambling to find money. Uh, let's see. Um, Sir, you had a question? Yeah, Pat, okay. So I've owned uh, Central, 16 Central Street since 1987. I've lived in Brookfield my 69 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy with what is done on Central Street. I mean, I dealt with parked up sidewalks and people tripping on stuff and mm -hmm. not being able to park decent, holes that were bent. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's a 100% improvement. I'm, I, I, rec I commend them for doing a great job. Thank you. As, Thank you. As, a, as an owner on this street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mike? And, and I would just like to reiterate that. I I think it looks great. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Okay. The road's never been so smooth. The sidewalks. This was a, a long time coming project. We completed it. Yep. We should be I, happy. And I, I commend Ryan, too. And, you know, I just got to say, Ryan has been really helpful. Uh, to us with the cemetery. Anytime I've ever had to ask Ryan mm -hmm. for anything, he's been right there. I think the cemetery commissioners can agree with that. The yeah. National Recent Paving Committee has made some great recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very much support Ryan. Okay. I do. No, he thank you. I, I, job. And I don't think we hear that too much, or as much as we should with some, some folks around here. And, um, I, I, I just want to say that. That's no, I, thank you. No, I, uh, thank you for that. I, I, I concur. It looks great. Yeah. It, it just, we, we have, we do get some feedback that it's like there are some, I guess I'll say, my, uh, dissatisfactions with parts of the project. Like there's a concern, with, like I said, with the concern with the street width. And so it's like, but we couldn't, we couldn't leave it untouched. And as yeah. I forget, someone pointed out, it's like in order to get the money to be able to do this, I think it was Mr. Chafee. In order to get the way to do this, we did have to put yeah. those bike lanes in. And so therefore, to What's be that? able to do this, we did have to give up some of what we had. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Chafee? One last thing. Uh, I asked Ryan about the width of the street. It appeared more narrow to me as well. Mm -hmm. Ryan, Ryan said it's within a couple inches of the same width, right? It's, what it it's within was. two inches. So it's deceiving. When you get that new pavement, it looks totally different than the old. You get the new strength. The, the part totally was, looks the parking stalls are longer because oh, that's really? part of the code, I guess it would be. Yeah. The stalls, you mean the uh, the angled parking the spaces, angled, they stick the, further out the street? The angled parking sticks out further mm -hmm. because that's um, it's probably, you know, a compliance thing. Or yeah, whatever. and the, the shoulder line on the other side, did we have a shoulder line before? Or was it just no. pavement onto it, just straight onto the shoulder? Yeah, and, that, and I, can I can understand that that would, would visually make the road seem narrower because you don't drive to the yeah, right of so, the white line. So basically, when you get a complaint like that, I think you got to kind of dismiss it rather than an act on similar to the curb, right? If someone mm -hmm. runs the tire up on the curb at Walmart. Yeah. It, it, it's it's nonsense. There. They're not going to go into Walmart, and Walmart's going to give them a new tire, right? I mean, right. It's just nonsense. The, so. Just to be clear, that the woman was not asking the town for anything. Oh, no, it was, no, it was just, it was just reported. No, it was just reported that, she, that, that the curb 
she yeah. didn't fit in the lines. Yeah. She was in an SUV. She was yeah. an older person. So and she was not angry with the town. She was oh. frustrated that she didn't fit. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, so then then I just wanted to expand on my comment about the street that I stop in the highway department maybe once, twice a month. I literally see this guy and the rest of the health down there take a truck that our previous highway boss said is junk and we need to get rid of it. 1991 truck. Is that the one that we saved two hundred thirty thousand dollars because we didn't buy the new one? That was an epic. I watched them rebuild that truck for fifteen grand. Yeah, that and, was. And that I'd was be epic. proud to drive that truck. Uh, I have a 1993 truck that's very similar. That these guys need to be commended for what they do because they're saving the town a ton of money. Mm -hmm. You go to Westbrook Dealers, get brand new trucks. You go to Northbrook Dealers, buy brand new ten wheels. And they're working out almost three hundred thousand. It's, it's more like two eighty, not two thirty. And probably with the right uh, body on it to stand in, it's probably over 300. So I think these guys need a little more pat on the back. And you know what? You guys are in charge of the whole town, and you probably you could, you got a lot going on. It's a big undertaking to, to to watch over every department, and I get it. But that's the biggest department, and I think those guys need a data boy once in a while. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing a good job. So that's that's it for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the biggest problem on Central Street is the bike. People see that bike flying, and that's what throws everybody off, saying the street's skinnier now, it's not as wide. Mm -hmm. You know, why do we have the bike path? I think that's what is upset the most. Well, and I, and I think the other concern with the bike lane is people along that side of Central Street park where that bike lane is. Yeah. And that can create a potential liability issue if someone's riding. There happens to be that person riding a it's, bike. It's, it's actually, not the town. It's actually not legal yeah, for that car. bicycle lane. Right. So I don't know if you know. I mean, so the might just need to The lighting even on the park or not on the town. Right. No, I wasn't, so, I wasn't so, saying so, our. So it may be one of those yeah. scenarios where they need to start writing warnings for, mm -hmm. and then escalate. Yeah. Cool. So. Right. Well, the police? Yeah. I mean, it's illegal to speed, too, when everyone's doing it. They can't, they can't yeah. govern everyone. I mean, my God, leave people alone. Like, who's realistically riding a bike down? You don't even see a kid outside anymore. Never mind a bike lane in the frickin' Central Street. It was a you requirement. Should, you, you should have seen my kid. He do it all down his front. So it's a requirement to have it. Mm -hmm. So we do it. But do we enforce it? I mean, come on. Yeah. I, I, I think we're drifting a little bit off topic um, about what to do about the bike lane. I think the, uh, the topic is more how we got the bike lane and we can talk about what we're going to do about it uh, at another meeting because we are, uh, we do have a big agenda and it's yeah. seven o'clock. I think so it, it seems to me that we, it, Ryan, as on the next project, we're, we are going to be a little more diligent in working with you and saying, okay, what are your funding sources? What are your what's your estimate? And just keeping an eye on things and making sure that it, that it uh, continues to come in on budget. It's uh, and then just just making sure it's like I think this discussion a lot of discussion is happening because you had one vision of how things were going to work out in your mind, and I think the uh, select board at the time seemed to have seemed to hear something different than what you were trying to tell them, and so therefore getting it in writing and being a little more explicit and saying it three or four times in a couple different ways just to make sure everyone can triangulate and say, oh yeah, that, yep, oh wait, you meant that? We have a chance to sort of catch the, those gaps in understanding. Yep. But I mean, I don't, what do you, what does the rest of the board think the of this? The good news is I think I did the hardest project in the whole town. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So there you the go. I have for you. High five. Tom, so, I still got that black paint. So. <laughs> la la la. You should you shouldn't admit to having that black paint, Mr. Holcraft. I didn't say what I was going to do with it. I just said I did it. There's been multiple uses of various un unnamed black paint around this town. I don't know if that's something I'd want to advertise. And then. How much money did in oh April April twentieth? I'm trying. Well, I think that's where part of the confusion comes is that there was there was the original request, there was a total budget of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then there was the request for the. Um, somehow it felt like there were two discrete requests. 
for the ARPA money separate of the original request for the coverage. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I have is that according to the minutes on March 31st of this year, the board um, allocated an additional 197,000 of ARPA money for this project. And so my question becomes, and the and according to, in your section here, Ryan, the available funding sources, that that was post fact. It's like basically this is how the project was funded. Yeah. This isn't a, this wasn't a forward looking statement. This no. is a bad report. Okay, yeah. and that okay, that's cool. Um, so effectively, going in, we had under fifty thousand. It's almost as though we had under fifty thousand dollars of ARPA money allocated to this project. How much? Under fifty thousand dollars, because no. uh, well, uh, no, well, I guess what I'm saying is, his request for more money is like his. It seems like he's drawn two hundred forty-two thousand dollars of ARPA money for the project. He's so I think three hundred and eighty thousand six hundred sixteen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So what happened to wait, the hundred and eighty thousand six sixteen? Kelly, okay, uh, is what Kelly, we I, from ARPA? Well, Kelly, that's what that's what Lori has from yes. on, in her record. But the that spreadsheet said that that could be commingling water, the water project and the highway project because on that spreadsheet. All, there was there was a row for water and a row for highway and there's a column for 22 and a column for 2023 right and the water department row had a number in the 2022 column and the highway department had a number only in the 2023 column right because the projects were done in two different years the water department was done in okay the water department I then think we only spent 40,000 in 22 out of our budget. okay then the, then the question becomes, if we use $300,000 worth of ARPA money on a project for which we had $556,000 worth of grants, $556,000, and how much was that? Three eighty. The difference from what you voted, and this this is Lori's spreadsheet. So the difference from what you voted was you voted up to 197. Yep. So that was in June. Was it in June? Or was mm -hmm. it in, was it in yeah. this year? That, that was, was this, this year. year. That was this year. Yeah. I mean, just doing quick numbers. That the amount spent exceeded was exceeded by 183. Yeah. Three three hundred eighty thousand of ARPA money effectively completely displaces any need for Chapter 9 funding. The ARPA money plus the grants adds up to the project cost, or they're very close. So do you know, did we spend any ARPA money? I'm sorry, did we spend any Chapter 90 money on this project? I wouldn't know that. Lori was yeah, just yeah. telling us how much the ARPA account was. OK, that's fine. It's she, like, she actually not, wanted us to clarify, because it's over budget, by a thousand something, two thousand dollars, it's over promised. It, the it, ARPA money is over allocated. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So that's, I, that's where this came from. It wasn't right. something that we were looking for. It just showed I'm, up in the email. I'm very confident that the 241,949 is exactly what we use from ARPA. Very confident. Okay. But that doesn't change that they voted 197. Right. But so. And the balance. We voted 197 after I'd already spent some. Because we, we yeah. had to pay, I believe we had to pay some ARPA money the prior year. But I don't have that in front. I don't know exactly. I, I kind of. Yeah, that would be. And, and this, is, this is the point, the the, and this is the part of the confusion of the not having all of it in front of us at the time. And, and um, again, Right, so did we spend the 140 of the chapter 90? Yeah, I think there's, there's a, there is a small amount of money left right now. But then why would the accountant be reporting that it num uh, a, a, an ARPA expenditure that seems to displace the chapter 90 expenditure? I don't think they're related. I think this is in addition to the chapter 90 expenditure 
but that puts the expenditure above above the reported project cost. Right. So you the, need an itemized list from um, the accountant. Yeah, I and, think that's what we need to go back and ask. Submitted for. it yeah. to to be Was very the clear. Yeah. Um, um, no, they were finished. The water department finished. The water department project finished in 2022, to and the so service. therefore, I think it's a reasonable expectation that the ARPA expenditure on Central Street would all be on the highway side of the project. But yeah, so because because the ARPA has its own account number, right? So we would have to pull every single warrant. We have to pull all the invoices. That and every single invoice going back through the two years. Mm -hmm. to get that list of who came from what department. And it would just be, we're specifically interested in water and highway in this case, right? Well, that's the only thing we've spent right. ARPA money on to date that okay. I'm aware of. And then... Because you see there's nothing else expended on the right. list. Right. So... Yeah. And then, uh, since we're talking you about have, ARPA money... Excuse me, Tom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean Go to ahead. interrupt. No. You have already got all of that information. You have that list. You're very confident in your number, right? So you could give us an itemized list of everything that was spent from our yeah. And I bet Polly has the same thing for the water department. So yep. that might be the way to get it. I yeah, we may want to go from the Excel spreadsheet up. of the entire Central Street project, every expenditure. Okay. It's all in there. Okay. Yeah. And Is you sent and you sent that over already? No. Okay. Right down. So I think I think what we need you to do is share that to us and to the accountant, so that we can try to figure out why, it, from a bookkeeping perspective, it looks like it's overspent. Yep. Because it sounds like that's where the disconnect is. Right. Yeah. On a. I don't think it's as bad as it looks. I think there's something else going on. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, Lindsay's but, very good at these that's, numbers. That's, in, that's entirely possible. So, and that may be what, where we have the disconnect is that you have it as being submitted against one account and it got processed against another. Could and, be. That, and that's a very hard, people and, and, and that would be a very hard thing to catch because we would be looking at the invoices. The invoice would match what was pulled and we wouldn't necessarily know from looking at it that it was the right account to, to have it pulled out of. Yeah. So. Um, so, I mean, but fundament fundamentally, I think the issue is that's like, another which account from. paid for the project. And that if the ARPA account was used to pay for all these bills, that means that there's Chapter 90 money that no, wasn't expended. No, it doesn't. This is not, this is completely separate. So you got, you got two banks, yes. you got two bank accounts. Yes. Part of the project came out of the road money. That's one bank, one bank account, right? Yes. You guys are agreeing violently. This. This is the um, the ARPA money is completely separate. This does not counteract anything that has to do with the road money. You guys are agreeing violently. Are we agreeing? Yeah, you're agreeing, agreeing violently. Okay. You're actually both saying the same thing with different with words. With different words. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Thank I'll you, Beth. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, no. It's, yeah. it's a, yeah. Yeah. the total yeah. expenditure is the same. It's just which account the money got it paid Track, for. What, what it got tracked back to, and it sounds like what what Ryan thought it got tracked back to might not be what it got tracked back to by the account. Yeah. So I think we need to look at the list from the invoices. So they up. were missing, um, and and they were they were just submitted. They were they were missing. Um, what's the name of the account, right? For the road work. There's missing chapter 90 requests for reimbursements that we just processed. Did that have anything? They're not missing. Was? The state couldn't process them. The state has an issue right now. But I just signed them. So Those they are going in again. Okay. So, oh, so they were submitted prior? But they, they were trying to be submitted for July 1st. Okay. And this, the, but this, are those part of this? So it looks no, like no. There's okay. Rice Corner. Right. There's Quaybog Street. There's other. There's a okay. lot of other. All right. things I didn't know on. if maybe I. I oh, maybe this is where it is no. and why it looks like it's from one and not the other. No, there's other. There's a lot going on right now. So. Okay. Yeah. She's just getting a glass of water. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I just. Are you guys going to put a bike lane on Green Street too? Like that? No, that's not, that's that's not a complete That's not a complete street ramp. We're never doing another bike lane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that was lesson learned on the grant. Yes. And after the state signs off on it, who knows? 
knows what happens with that black paint. You can only get one complete screen screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. You can so, put it to good use for the so community. To, to summarize, it seems like that everyone is, most people are generally happy with the project. It, we've heard some complaints about specific details of it, but I, don't, I haven't heard anyone say that it looks bad or that it was done poorly, and th uh, that it reflects, po that the job that the vendor did and the highway department did reflects poorly on Ryan. It's, I think that we have, uh, we as a town, specifically the, uh, uh, and I think this falls mainly on the select board because it's like things like this all come to us. It's not just highway, it's just this manifestation was on a project that was being run by highway, is that we need to be more diligent and more strict with ourselves saying we're not gonna, we're going to make sure we take a look at things a little more closely and make sure we fully understand the funding before we say, yes, we're going to do this. And that's, that's incumbent on us, and that's, that's a lesson learned to go forward. And I don't like to say we need more paperwork, but maybe we need a, one or two more things written down going forward. Uh, Beth and uh, Brad, I've done a lot of talking. Do you guys have anything that you want to say that you haven't already said? No, I think the only questions I have were in regards to the finances of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're good. That was that was that good was good to get some answer. positive feedback because all I've gotten is people. Dig. Trust me, you're only getting a small portion of some of the feedback I've gotten, Ryan. So, okay. so <laughs> well, I'll let the I'll let the positive comments stand. All right. So. Um, the the one the one ask I have is since um, right now I'm the ad hoc um, accessibility person for the town until we find a real volunteer. At some point, if we can put on your future project plans, the, the chunk of sidewalk that they turned into a, a, a climbing gym, that would yep. be great, so. As far as that goes, we had to draw the line somewhere. I know, I get it. It's I, not too late, they can still address it. So, I you get know, it. Yeah. What's that? I was gonna say, if you have a ballpark. Do we know how much it would cost? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have an estimate on what it would take to, to to, to, fix it. to fix that to actually be in the right pitch for accessibility it's it's probably like a fifteen thousand dollar thing okay something like that where is this literally right in front of my house okay the pitch of the so there's a particular pitch that's allowable for like handicap accessibility on oh. sidewalks oh for the curb cuts for the well no, not for no, the, curb the curb cuts it's for it's up. it's for the rest of it so okay. in, in order to get compliant on the curb cut mm -hmm. we went way non-compliant on the stretch leading up to the curb that's not part of the project mm -hmm. so it went from like something that was probably a little bit steeper and i think it showed up on the report even it's in its old state it showed up on the report even its old state as being like too steep mm -hmm. going into that intersection and it basically doubled the pitch that's on that particular stretch of sidewalk. So like, especially during the winter time, like prior to, to snow clearing, like mm -hmm. it's, that's, when that ice is up, it's gonna be like a, a, a high entertainment value piece of territory, <laughs> basically. You're gonna, you're gonna put an outdoor camera okay. up and start selling videos to American Thunder Yeah, videos. something like that, <laughs> yeah. It'll help pay for the, for the salt I'll probably invest in to try to keep the town out of trouble for that stretch of, of, mm -hmm. of uh, concrete, so. All right, thank you. All right, so at this point we have identified that um, Ryan is gonna go, or Ryan's gonna have Lindsay go through the, um, the invoices and identify all the accounts that were, um, that you requested that they be paid out of. Is we're that? Gonna, we're gonna share our spreadsheet mm -hmm. with Lori okay. directly, okay. literally. So then she can look at what we have and she can look at what she has and we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, and, let's and just do it, let's consider, tell her to consider it one of her department reconciliations because I know we're supposed to be doing department reconciliations on a, on a periodic basis. So mm -hmm. let's just do it for the project instead of for the month with them. Yeah, let's get, yep. Okay, that, that works. Does that, that doesn't require a vote from us. That's just something. No, All right, nah. good. no. All right, and then uh, uh, pending the, uh, the results of Lori looking at that, we can uh, revisit this matter at a future meeting. If um, necessary, right? Yeah, depending on the result. If, yeah, exactly. Okay, if all right, I missed that. Got all it, right. sorry. No worries. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, does anyone else have anything to say on this matter before we go to agenda item number three? 
Excellent, moving on. Uh, let's see. Grass mowing. All right. Uh, Should I step down? Uh, I was going to say, you stay up here, Ryan, because <laughs> we may need you to talk. <laughs> but, um, it, so long as you all promise not to like play pr punch buggy while Dave goes up there to ask his question. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Come on up, sir. Do you want me to come up? Yeah. Come on up. So, Mr. Hol Mr. Holcraft, you have. Um, good evening, Tom. Good, good evening. Could you, uh, uh, in in your own words, could you um, describe your concern to the uh, to the board? Yes, I want. I own 17 High Street, which is on Route Nine. I got a 400 foot frontage, mm -hmm. and there's a strip of grass that doesn't belong to the town or me. Mm -hmm. And I've been cutting it, and I don't feel I should be cutting it when new people are cutting from the Common to Merrick Street. And you're also cutting the hall in front of the cemetery. You do not, the town does not own the land in front of the cemetery. The state does, and you're cutting that as well. Mm -hmm. So why are you not cutting mine? Uh, let's see. Because of Dave Holcraft? Because of my name? You, you, you know that's a plausible explanation, but it's not the explanation. <laughs> no, because, because we, we, we don't, we, we don't. Oh, who, who, who would have thought you'd have cared? It's like, I don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. <laughs> We moved from the cemetery because we were responsible for the cemetery, and um, at the risk of speaking for uh, someone doesn't like my voice, <laughs> at the risk of speaking for for Mike and the cemetery commission, I believe that as part of keeping the cemetery looking good, this that the town maintains that state-owned land between the sidewalk and the roadbed in front of the cemetery. Now, with regards to that strip between Merrick Ave and River Street. There is, the town has historically. Commons, yeah. Commons. Uh, Commons. River Street Commons. Yeah. So they come together at that yeah. point. Um, there is a historic marker in that section. It is probably about a third of the way from River to Merrick. And I believe that the town has historically mowed that entire section because the historic, the historic marker is there. And therefore, the town has an interest in mowing the area of the historic marker and then just we've just mowed the rest out of out of sort of like not wanting to leave it just want not wanting to leave it looking crappy. Hey, so, can, 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 okay. I, can I can I give an example? Sure. The White House in front of me, even though I don't always get to do my lawn, when I do my lawn, I do the strip in front of them if they haven't gotten to it yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I think that's basically what you just described for the areas that we're mowing is that we're already mowing in those areas for other reasons. So we hit the adjacent space. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that we have any mowing efforts that are out where you're talking about. Do we have any mowing efforts that are adjacent to the space that he's talking about? No. no. So, you know, to me, it's a it's a very, and a I very wasn't similar here space. When we started mowing. So uh, people just mow it out of. Yeah, hand. yeah. So I had asked Ryan about it. Ryan said he wasn't sure why I called. Herb Chafee because he was the prior, asked him if he knew why we did, and he said it was a matter of Alan Martell before him <laughs> with that previous select board that it was determined then that they should cut all that grass, and that's how it came to be. Now, if we want to look through stuff for it. <laughs> so that's how it became. <laughs> that's how it became, <laughs> is what I was informed of. Right. So. And and that's How many fine. years is that for the minutes, please? Because this is just, <laughs> so, so, just so going back, that. I don't <laughs> go, going yeah. back, going back to Jim Allen, that be like that got to be like forty years. <laughs> that's, I mean, when you do those gazintas, you we're talking probably four decades. <laughs> well, I don't care if it's four decades or a hundred decades. A matter of the fact is, you're mm -hmm. cutting two, two or three different strips, and you're not cutting in front of my house. I don't get it. You but does you, you, you keep saying yeah. about this? Yeah. There's this monument, yeah. you just cut around the monument, and you don't have to cut all the way down. There's no reason for it. You cut around but, the monument, but, that's what everybody else does. It, like, it, it sounds like, like the much? key is that where it's being mowed, there is a piece of town owned property adjacent to it. Yeah, that's right. That's up at the common in the corner. The rest and of the, the state, cemetery. The state belongs to the rest. I check with them. But and in the cemetery. Cutting, you're cutting the state property, and you're cutting in front of the cemetery. Why can't you cut my strip? We have that no interest in the head. we ha the town has no interest in the property in, in in that strip in front of your property. We have an interest in the property in front of the cemetery. 
we're responsible for the cemetery. And as part right, of keeping, excuse problem. me, can I finish, please? Yeah, go ahead. So, as thank you. So, as part of maintaining the look of the cemetery, we mow the strip in front of the cemetery. The town has an interest in the historic marker between River and Merrick Street, so we mow in that area. We have no interest in that strip in front of your house, so we don't mow in front of your house. We are not going to mow in front of your house. We are, I will say it again, we will not mow, I, well, I'm sorry. I see no reason for us to mow in front of your house. I should not be speaking for the board, I speak for yourself. I see no reason we should mow in front of your house. We can discuss how much of an interest the town and how much the town should be mowing in okay. the area of that monument. Can I interrupt for a question? Thank you, yes, I'd, I'd love to. And I already interrupted to ask one question, but I I'll ask the second question while I inter have you interrupted. Why do you think we should? Other than the, mowing the other areas, what, what what is your reason and what value would we be returning to the town to add to the mowing rotation, the, the place in front of it's your simply, property? If you're, gonna, if you're gonna do one for one, you do it for all. You don't just pick and say, I'm gonna cut this little piece, but I'm not gonna do this one, I'm gonna do that one too, but not that one. But, but Dave, so, but so, Dave, so, you're saying, we, so you're saying if we do these two areas that aren't necessarily town property that we should mow every strip in front of every person in front of everywhere. If, if, if that's correct, if it's not their property and it's town owned property, yeah, you should be doing it. But it's not town owned property, it's the state. It's a state, right? Yes. Okay. And so, so and then the town, sure. the town mows where the town has an interest. We don't have an interest in the, in the front of your property. Ah, but this, you're cutting state property down, but if somebody tell you're cutting up, you're cutting up by Merrick, that's state property. But we're not, but okay, we're not okay, cutting okay. every piece of state I property was, across. Dave, Dave, Dave I, was, I, was, I will say this again. For some and not for others. Dave, I'm I was like, wait, wait this is not, this is not about you. I'm sorry, this is not about you. This is about, excuse me. My this God. is about where the town has an interest. We do not have an interest in front of your house. We have an interest in front of the cemetery. We have an interest around the historic oh. marker. Yeah. So therefore, we will figure out how to mow around the, in the areas we have an interest. Your property, don't have an interest. Right, you can so, do one for one for all. That's what I just said. Can you have a state mow it then? Yeah, I don't go talk the to the state. <laughs> well, I'm, so not, I'm, call I'm, not, I'm not gonna mow it. I will not mow right. it anymore, so. Okay. So I have a question along so these lines. So if you want to look like health in the town, <laughs> that's your guys. That's up to you guys. Well, you already got the yellow sign. <laughs> yeah. Yellow sign is nothing to do with the grass. No, but so and all the brush and all of the all of the brush and the nasty yeah. crap that's been on that property. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. So there must be a reason for that, Beth, and there is a reason for it. Mm -hmm. I have a question along the lines of something that I noticed is, and maybe someone else has the answer to this: the cherry trees that are were planted along Route 9. Who is to maintain around the cherry trees? I think I think they're cherry trees. The town's doing it. Sure, they are. The town's doing it. So, but you got an interest with them, but you don't have an interest in keeping the grass looking nice around the trees. That's what you're telling me. So, do you guys weed whack around those trees? I I don't know. I don't know the history of the cherry trees, um, and we don't maintain. As far as I know, yeah, the, the uh, apple seed put them in originally, yeah. and then I know recently uh, I, we the, put out a, an announcement. Dennis, yeah. Dennis did a yeah, bunch of the shade trees. Cherry trees, everything uh, west. Uh, Dennis did a bunch of the shade trees. So those trees everybody technically everybody aren't. Maintain, everybody maintains them on the state property. Mm -hmm. And if, if you want to, so. I'll, I'll mow the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw how you mow it. It looks like hell. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so. I mowed the state property. I mowed the state property. Oh, oh my goodness. So you, so you did what I do with 12 common. Yeah. You were you were out with your mower and you hit it. It, it. it takes me, takes me or whatever I have to do it for 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And it shows too. Yeah. So 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 someone did something for you for free and you're complaining about the quality of the services delivered. I am. Mm -hmm. I sent him a bill. He didn't pay me. <laughs> so, but you're going to maintain the cherry trees on state property. Is what you're doing? You're no, I don't think. No, we, are we just said that we don't. No, they just said they didn't. That's not true. You're planting. You just 
planting trees in front of my house, three, four hundred dollars a piece, and then you came back and mulched them. Yeah. That's and right. then you money. That was donated from yeah. from from. Yeah. Yeah. That was at the that was in the town. I, yeah. We bought five ourselves. I yeah. Five but I'm just saying, like you're still you're still maintaining the apple trees. You're still maintaining the cherry trees. But the town. You're not listening. You're not listening to what we just said. You aren't. No, no, the town did not put yes, them in. Dennis and Ryan were over there. They did it yeah, on the town. The town did those trees. Oh, we put them in. We absolutely put okay. them in. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But okay. they're not maintaining them. It's, it's private donations that have done it. Done, done and it. And done yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. The town. Right, so that's fine. All right. So that's my answer. That that is your answer. Okay. That's fine. All right. All right what else? That's All it. Right. I believe that's it for for the uh, mowing issue. Thank you, Dave. Uh, let's see. Uh, what I would, what what I would like to, uh, Ryan, are you involved in the cemetery commission report? Yes. All? all right. Then then we can go then we can go to that one next. All right. Thank you, Dave. How many people are here from the cemetery commission? One. Well, from the patient committee. One, two, three, and Ryan, four, five. Is that a quorum? Yeah, it's it's way a quorum. Yeah. Did you post it as a meeting? Oh, shoot. <laughs> so, uh, did we post what is a meeting? That you have a quorum here yeah, having quorum a meeting? Here. How many is in your committee? Seven. Eight of us. Eight. Yeah, eight. So, so five a is a quorum. So there's only two in here, so. No, there's five. Is it? Mm -hmm. One, two, two three, three, four, four and Mike is oh, five. Mike's gone. <laughs> no, he just told me he was leaving. Oh, okay. Are you making a decision when you just started? No, I just so so oh, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a decision. Open meeting laws, if you have a quorum and you discuss anything within your purview, right. is an open meeting violation. Right. Right. If Mike is gone, Mike, 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 then they do not have a quorum and they can, can they can stay and continue. I, but I didn't realize Mike was actually leaving. Yeah, he, told, he just told me he was leaving. Okay. Because I think you realize what was going on. <laughs> 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 no, that's fair. That's, that's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. No. Right. So there's so no I'll issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no issue. Sorry, I just gave you a Okay. And all we want to do here is I'm Pat O'Day again, chairman of the Cemetery Commission, and we just wanted to report on our paving committee results. Mm -hmm. which I hope you got the letter ahead of time. He did, read. yes. I did read it. Okay, good. Yeah. So that being said with what was in the letter, everybody's getting along fine. We've come to the conclusions of what we want to do. The only issue we have is at the, at the last town meeting, it was brought up that this was going to be done in-house. At the last minute, mm -hmm. somebody from the stage said that it was. I didn't have time to get up and say, no, it isn't, before it got voted on. So, um, and it's water portion? Everything. And the way it looks now is we have to do certain work for the Historical Commission in a certain way, like the chip paving that we want to do. Chip we can't chip. use regular asphalt. We have to go along the Historical Commission's uh, regulations or they have a whole book of what you have to do because it's a So that was determined in the... Uh... Yes. So we've got that all ironed out. But the problem is, I want the taxpayers to know that it's going out for bid, both water and, I mean, that... Uh, yeah, the water line. Ryan's going to do as much as he can. And Dennis is going to do as much as he can for the water. But we're going to have to do some horizontal drilling so that we don't make the cemetery a big mess with a lot of construction mm -hmm. to the water. Yeah. And so we found out that and we didn't know that to begin to begin with. Do do we have do we have the actual text of the motion and what we voted? Because even if it sounded like we needed to do it with in house results, is that actually how it was voted? Particular well, particularly at the last second somebody stood up and I don't know who it was, they asked if this was going to be done in house. I was me. Okay. Whoever it was. And we voted and according to that, so yes, right, yes, that's vote. that's what I'm bringing up. Yeah. So it was under the impression, and Donald Fagno even mentioned it to me. No, we're doing this in, in house. And I said, No, Donald, that's a that's bad. That's a bad situation. Okay. So I want personally, I want the taxpayers to know 
that we need to send this out for bid. We're going to do as much in-house as we can. Ryan's going to do a lot of the bidding for the inspects for the bidding for the paving that we need. And but my biggest concern for this meeting is the taxpayers have to know at some some degree or whether you have a special town meeting this fall and you want to let them know, yeah. or so, it's up to town so, council okay. and selectmen to decide how that goes because that's not going to be on me. Yeah, it's no, I'm bringing this to you folks. That's, that's a political yeah. decision. And okay. so I, I think it goes so, to us. So we're going to, so, and, and, I'm, and I'm wondering what's, what's the best way to frame it up in terms of it, but, but we're going to have to have a special anyway because of the police contract. Yeah, it's like if we're having a special police contract, then we can. Do we want to revote this? Just put it I don't on think the you warrant? Need to, well, excuse me. I don't think you need to revote it. I think you need to clarify what it is. And then if you have an objection in the audience, then maybe it needs to get revoted. Yeah, well, but but in order to really be mechanism. discussed, there has to be a warrant article. At, at the special town meeting, yeah, in order have, to discuss it, we would have to have something on the agenda to vote so, on, which right. we so, would have so, to have the vote. So why wouldn't we just post a public hearing that's a joint? meeting between the select board the paving committee and just open it to the public and and take the step of put like posting it in the paper or whatever since it's a public hearing to say hey this is going to be clarification on the path forward for the article voted on xyz at the town meeting and then if people care they show up if they don't care they don't show up and it is not our problem because we made the attempt to communicate with the with with folks yeah, we we we, with, we, anou I mean, we with, announce it and we give them a ch we give the voters in the town a chance to comment on it right and 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 based on the feedback we then decide what we want to whether do. it needs to go on the special or not yes. does, does that make sense so that that's great because the more publicity the better the more you can get this out there because you're not hiding anything you right want to oh, absolutely you want to be transparent yeah. i mean that's the last yeah. thing i want to do because because I, right. I don't think we need to but i because i don't think we need to wait for the special no, i know we're not, we're not going to do any bidding until this is taken care of based on the vote you had you were supposed to report to you but did they say that you had the authority to move the project forward without it actually being voted that was my understanding was that yeah. they gave us that they gave well, us the authority right, to yeah. do so yeah. right I, they gave us a bunch of there but it, then they th they threw this committee together at the last minute kind of ad hoc to make sure that it was done and they wanted a report are they anticipating a report at the next town meeting or are they anticipating mm -hmm. the work to be done and the report to be given to you so it I might just, be I the it, it, it was, was to the select one. okay so it might be worth sword. listening to that section of the meeting over again yeah and then you know we've got the recordings from a from a political standpoint i would whether we have whether the text of the article empowers us to go forward or not if a commitment was made on the floor of town meeting that it would be done in house and that is now changing I like the idea of holding a hearing, informing the town, and giving people a chance to comment on that and express their cons whatever concerns they have. And I expect people who don't have a concern are going to say, "I, they're not going to show up because they don't have a concern." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's so, like the people have concerns are going to show up, and and that that I, th I think that is a sufficient fulfillment of our duty to the voters to inform them of this change of how this project is going to be handled. And I think we have, a, we have a good reason for this change. It's not willy-nilly. It's like right. we're doing things yeah. that, can't, that we can't do in-house. We exactly. have to put it out to bid. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I would, I would almost say it's like if we, if we wanted to push it, we could say, yeah, everything that the town can do is being done in-house. There are things the town well, can't do. Right. But, I like the, but I would rather be up front and disclose this and hold the hearing. I don't, I don't want to be told, I don't want to be accused of hiding things when I So if we, if we li listen to, re-listen to the meeting and mm -hmm. get verbatim the discussion and the, and the vote, that will instruct us on how to pose the information in a hearing and whether or not it needs to go back to town meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. And you can do the, you can do them both. There's right. nothing to stop you from doing yeah, that. Yeah, we could do the, the hearing, and if, if we, we decide that it, it's enough of a material difference between what was discussed at town meeting and what we're doing, then um, then we take it to the special, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, just a moment. I, uh, well, it sounds like you had your hand up first. I don't have the resolution, but I mean, if you don't listen to it, I guess I might want to move. But the way I remember it is that the... Uh, the uh, town voted to put this special committee together so that, this, that they would report back to 
you guys, you guys can make that decision based on our our recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't remember saying that it was we that the town board that we were going to do it in house. I think that committee was put together so we say, hey, this is what we need, and you guys make that execute it. I mean, that's that's how I remember, but clearly other people were were, were laser focused in on on some of the side comments. So I'm not I'm not naysaying that the other stuff was said. Okay, so so don't get me wrong. I mean, I was looking at the end result, which was we kept the budget, we voted the budget into the control of the select board with a, a, a informed board advising us on on what's the right path forward based on all of the considerations, the historic and just the needs of the cemetery, right? But it was kind of a two-pronged thing. Yeah. What you're specifically talking about is the paving. Yeah. yeah. And the other prong is the water work. Right. Yeah. That's what was specifically said. Yeah. My recollection right. was yeah. what was so specifically I, said was how was the, the being done and was said to be housed for the yeah. water so, so as cemetery commissioner, I would like to see the air cleared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and, and absolutely. At, at, at a public meeting, somehow, yeah. however we can resolve it. Yeah. Because the last thing we want to do was go behind somebody's back and say, right. hey, they did right. this because. Right, and, and I'm not saying we don't need, and, I, and I'm not saying we don't need to do anything else. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying is that I, I think, I think based on the discussion there, I, I think we're on solid ground if we well do a well advertised public hearing. I'm okay with that. And and then yeah. I don't know about permit. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 Mr. Chamber was right. The situation about using in-house or contract was just for the water. I don't think there was any discussion about whether we contract it out or the highway do it. Yeah, because we were talking about paving. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the means to pay that. Yeah. yeah. I think it was just the water was the, the just the water piece of it. And we just yeah, and we don't have that type of specialized yeah, equipment. Yeah. There's all like Mr. Chase, there's two points here. First of all, we allocated money we set aside and then the committee was gonna figure out how we were gonna do the road work. And the vote was taken to have the water lines done in house. That's how the vote was taken. Now, what you're talking about, advertising and let people know, I don't know if that's going to watch as far as protocol goes with the law. I mean, well, I think we need to re. I think we need to review the video. Yeah. And, I mean, and I, I agree. With it. I mean, I think we need to do it. Everybody's on board with it. But I'm just saying the way the vote was taken, you should yeah. look into that. Bye. I'll, yeah. I'll Bye. get a clip and queue it up and send you each. Yeah, I mean, because the uh, section of the meeting and tell you where to queue it up to 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 just listen to that section. Yeah, because I would say the the text of the article that the meeting voted is binding. The text yes. of the warrant article. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so and yeah. there and and the commitment there that's a that is outside of the binding contract, but it's something that the, if the text we, of the warrant article gave the money to the cemetery commission, not to the selectmen. So that vote changed who's in charge of the funds. Okay, it's like yeah, but I, I guess my point is that the um, if a if a promise was made um, out, but it was wasn't recorded in the article text, it's it's like it may not be enforceable. But my intention is, if that commitment was made, we will honor that commitment, whether the article requires us to do that or not. Yeah, no, it's, it's the only thing to do. Just clear the air. Yeah. And on a, on another note, a better note, I mean, Kermit and the historical commission. Chris with the conservation and water department and this young fellow right here, we work together fine. We came mm -hmm. to a consensus of what we want to do. So when we get this little incident straightened out, we can go ahead with the bidding and mm -hmm. bring the bids to you. And so do our is it, so I have a question, is it is it worth how long are the bids typically good for? Because my question would be, is it worth timing the bids so that we, we maybe have some answers by the time of either if we've, we're targeting a date for the special or what have you to make yeah. sure that our... This, this so wouldn't go out to bid until the spring. So to your point, yeah. we're actually going to... Can't go out to bid until spring. We're actually going to do the work come spring because we realize with this problem and then other things we have, it's, it's just going to be too hard. Okay. And so we want to bid it in the winter time so that Maybe some anxious contractors would like to get the bid. Maybe yep. we can get Locking a little better business. price. Yep. Okay. You know, um, and then we can do the water before we pave yep. and, and get that all straightened out. Okay. So. All right. Uh, just, just, Kermit, just to address your question, I think it would be a good idea if we could get what the cost is. Somebody's going to ask the question. Oh, you're going to have done built done outside. 
what's the cost going to be? Exactly. Well, that's that's why I'm going there, Kirby. Ryan, can we get with the special November? We haven't set a date yet, but it would probably be early November. What, what I would say is, you, you already got the sixty thousand. Right. Do whatever the sixty thousand gets you, whether it's two or three roads. Um, we don't know until the bids come. And that that was what the cemetery commission planned. We were going to well, allocate that money, do as much as we can, yep. and then follow up the following year if there's money available. We're going to do that. And the same with the water. We probably won't be able to do all the water. Right. Well, I did state in that. Uh, document that we were going to discontinue, uh, remove the old piping, but we're not actually removing it. We actually figured out a way to repipe, mm. so we're not going to dig up the cemetery to remove the pipe. Oh, you're going to rewind. You're going to redo like relining, basically. No, no. We're just putting in. It's just a rerouting of Got it. of the line, so that we don't have to get into the older part of the cemetery and, and disturb that. Yeah. And we found the wreck. Horizontal, horizontal drilling is going to be a better way to do it uh, in, under the stone wall and stuff like that. And then, you know, regular construction work. So everybody worked together fine. We accomplished our job, I think. Great. Except for that little bit about the, you know, yeah. Yeah. How much, going out house. How much of an impact on our, like, What's, what's the cost increase of going with the horizontal drilling and the... Um, we, don't, we don't have the numbers on that yet, okay. but we figured we'd do what we could for $20,000 mm -hmm. and look at it before we spend the money or, or actually do it. But okay. trying to get this problem behind us is our biggest issue right now so that we can pursue what yeah. horizontal drilling is going to do. Maybe a, maybe a thin backhoe bucket and, you know, we're only going three feet deep, we could do that. but. We have to look at all, all the particular uh, ways to do it. You have to, you have to look at the options and figure out which one's the best. Yes. Okay. And, and being a historical site is what's put in the mind on everything. Since mm -hmm. 2003, we have to go through their, they have a whole protocol on how you treat the cemetery mm -hmm. in the older part. So, Kermit. Uh, this is where I differ a little bit. I, I don't like the idea. Well. We got sixty thousand, so we'll do as much as we can. I would like to go back to you guys and say what we're going to do for sixty thousand. And so, so you have an understanding of what we're well, well, that'll happen. Congress. Well, I'm saying before the November meeting. Oh, you know what, what I'm the, saying. But you don't know what the bids are going to come right. out. Well, but can you get? If you, you can get a bid. Can you get a bid? I can. You haven't asked them that. I yeah, can't, you can't get a bid until you get, know you're going to let it out for, yeah. for yeah. the price. So yeah, but good. but some of them will do like a ROM or a... a yeah, we already got that, basically. And, 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 with, and with regards to the work, again, you know, uh, is 20000 for the materials or is 20000 for materials no. and drilling? And so I think we should... So I don't want you guys to go through the same thing you did with the, the room. Mm -hmm. We give you half information. So I, me personally, I, I would like to give you as much quantitative information before that meeting. Is it I mean, only eighty thousand put aside? That's it. So and, and I don't think that's a big. So if you have a hundred hundred thousand dollar bid, they throw it out and you can't do it. You, you can only do it for eighty thousand. Well, 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 I, I think you guys should understand the, the process that I want to use to bid the work. Okay. And I'm not speaking for the water. This is strictly for the, the paving and, and chipstone. And we, we would do it <clears throat> like a price per ton for the asphalt. That's the, that's the number that the, the contractor would give us as a price per ton installed. And then also a price per square yard of chipstone installed. That way, we have that number. We can add or subtract the quantities to meet our needs mm -hmm. to fit the budget, and, that, and that's the only way I can figure to do it. So that you know, we, we can add or subtract, do you know, complete a road, and then say, well, we don't have enough to do that other road, so let's mm -hmm. just cut it off here. Yeah. One one thing I would uh, like to see when we have better cost, when you have better cost information, is an understanding of when the project was originally scoped out and money was requested 
and we were thinking to do it with asphalt and how we were originally planning to do it. Right. It's like we thought we would cover this much. And now that we are now that we have a way we know that we're going to do it and doing it this way, we're gonna cover this much and might be a little little might be a little bit less plus, or, a plus, or, less. plus or minus some well, we'll plus or minus whatever because be of the tips. Because we're not using all asphalt. Oh great. So, so you're using a two inch base with chipstone. Chip yeah. yeah, but I don't know if that's totally accurate. Because the chipstone is adding a pretty significant you know, twenty grand roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was a little bit fresh when we talked to the contractor. No, I was going to say, and, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm asking. We can work those numbers yeah. out. It's a, it, we just want, because it's, it's like, it's going it, 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 to be a lot easier if we say, yeah, we're doing a little bit differently, but be, it's like, but we're going to get the same amount of work done. No problem. We're not hiding anything. We yeah. want it straight out there, so yeah. we'll give you whatever you need. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, Dave. I, I think you've got all these figures and this and that, maybe, and we want to do as much as we can in house, but you've got to be both that. Maybe you should just bring this whole package back in November and see what we're going to do. Because if you get, if you go all bids, we're not going to have enough money for what we allocated to do this with people in house. The bids are going to be higher than what you can do. No, that's not no, necessarily no. true. There's a lot of times where where contractors wind up cheaper than doing stuff in house. That's why you should go to start the whole process and get the bids. And see can I, can I say something? So when we first went for this money, we found out there was available free cash. The commissioners decided that. Let's get the 60,000 we required and the 20,000. We'll do as much work for the paving as we can. We'll do as much of the water as we can. We know 20,000 is not enough to do the water, but the state is requiring us to do this water. Yep. They don't want the contamination in the lines. And the paving desperately needs to be done on a public safety venue because people are in there walking around and those roads are bad. So we're going to take the worst ones, we've already picked them through the committee, what we want to do, and between the yardage, the square yardage and the lineage feet, and get a price on that, and then we'll figure out how much we can do with that money. We don't need to go after more money or... Yeah, just do it. Do it. So by then you're going to have another annual town meeting, and if you by have any... Time <laughs> <get this> done, <laughs> make a motion a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. As long as the selectmen know that we need to straighten this out before yeah. we bid out. Yeah. I, and then, I appreciate yeah. the yeah, just public. I mean, no, I think we start with a public hearing and we review the tape and... and so just a point of interest, um, if I may. It was suggested that we get the bids and then go back for the money. You cannot do it that way. You have to have the money. This is why you had the right. general vote for the ARCA funding because yes. you have to have funds certain prior to offering contracts. You can't go out to bid unless you can offer the contract. Yeah. You, the you capital can, won't sign off on it if the funds aren't there. Yeah. So you, you absolutely have to stick within your you, current you, budget, you which it get, sounds like you're perfectly prepared to, to do it. Just yeah. want people yeah. to yeah. understand the actual legal process. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, Kelly, it's we, just a case we can take estimates without funding. Oh, you absolutely. can't go out to bid without can't funding. Bid without okay. Funding. Correct. So with the, in the meantime, we can look at that. We can have another meeting and talk to Dennis and see, get his ideas on what, mm -hmm. what we need for water. Ryan's already on top of it, so mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I think we're done here. As okay. as and, great. Here and, then, wait, one second. and then for reviewing, the, um, reviewing the, uh, the tape of the town meeting just to get a feel for the, um, some of the side discussion around the approval of the article. Is that something you're going to do, Kelly, or are you going to send us a uh, link and we'll... Well, I, I can do both. I can oh, review good. it, okay. and then I'll tell you exactly. I'll send you the clip mm -hmm. or the section of the meeting that it's in, because I have the meeting broken into four um, different videos. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you exactly where to queue it up to start so you're not listening to 45 minutes of somebody you know, discussing something that's completely off topic. And, Thank you. And that'll, I'll tell you how long it is. So you know okay. how long you need to block out. You know, mm -hmm. do you need to bring tequila? Do you need to bring coffee? You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> All right. And then maybe we can plan to uh, just um, consult amongst ourselves at the next meeting, um, time permitting, and decide what, what we think is the best course of action based on what was actually discussed and um, promised at town meeting. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sir. Yes, so, Chris. The, the town boards have this uh, for the paving committee to be uh, for 90 days. Does that mean this that's now done? Because I know that was something we talked about. Well, Mike said that it was up to the 20. It's, it's actually until the 
2024. I think you're with us for the long ride, Mr. Constitution. They owed us a report within 90 days of the formation right. of the committee. Right. So, we've, so we've received a report, right. right? And so now it's, now we, and part of the report was, hey, we're concerned about the fact that there was these other potential constraints right. on the funding that was voted by the town mm -hmm. and we want to ensure transparency and it sounds right. like we have a path forward for one validating how how strong that potential constraint is and whether or not a, a public hearing is would be sufficient to meet that requirement so sounds good that's all I ask we and we've been appointed for Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mike looked into that and said it was still for the year. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the report was due in 90 days. Right, right, right. And so we received the report. We so. received a report. Thank you for your help. So everybody's keeping us legal. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Try it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any more discussion on the Cemetery Paving Committee? All right. Then thank we will. Thank All right. Thank you. Then we'll move on to former campground concerns. Well, we're not done yet. No, okay. no we, don't don't have, leave we don't have the other guy here. No, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't oh, address this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in your in your uh, packet, you have an email from Tom Morse and his concerns about the um, native historic site in town, formerly known as the campground. It's, it's, it's in your, you have to take your paper clip off. I figured. That's okay. Used oh, to former campground. There we I go. am used to having the folder. There we go. Um, Got it. Ryan, while I have you, one of his concerns is that people have, there was a tree that went across the path. No, I've not been there. Would it be possible to take the granite that's sitting back there behind the fire department and put it over in front of the path so that ATVs can't go through there? Because that's one of his, he's very disturbed that uh, dirt bikes and ATVs are riding through the area. Yeah, anything's possible. Is it? <laughs> okay. Will you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We can do it. Do we? Do we also we, need? Do we also need to just post that no motor? I don't know if, if it is posted or was posted. I have no knowledge of this campsite whatsoever. I've never been back there. Um, now, is the campground currently designated as a park? Yes, it is, and it's yes. on the National Register. Okay, so we can, so we can't, we can't make it no trespassing, but we, or we probably shouldn't, but we should probably um, you certainly designate a no motor vehicle area. Yes. And that way, it's like in addition to deterring them, we do need to put something up saying. Doesn't he discuss this in his email? Didn't he say it was posted at one point? Mm -hmm. Uh, he didn't say that it was posted. Okay, it just that says must have been somebody was must have been telling me. Yeah. And I thought at one point, so, and it's been like a dog's age since I've been on the property, but there's an entrance, I think, from, from Pine? Is yeah, there, there is. Yeah. It, it used to be that the entrance coming in from Pine was posted no vehicles, but it was considered the only safe path to bring like a four-wheel a four vehicle in for the purposes of like getting equipment there to mow and the like. So, and it actually got cleared by the, like the, the main, like actually what used to be the main road in got basically cleared by the by the uh, archaeology people as mm -hmm. being like less likely to be impactful to the site fundamentally so what used to be the big main road in they basically said if there was anything there it was disturbed already it's okay to like take a vehicle in and basically turn around and bring it back out so like mm -hmm. if, if when we're bringing like a mower in or something like that it was okay do we currently maintain and cut grass down there? Yeah, we mow it ideally three times a year, but we are going to do it twice this year. <laughs> that's all we've been managed yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, um, but, and it was posted basically like, there, there used to be a sign there that said basically no motor vehicles. Yeah, I, so I think we should... So is um, that where he's talking no, about? No, I think he's talking from in? the back. No. He's talking about from the back side. So, so, what you should know, though, is at one time there was a log that was placed across that entrance, possibly by the highway department. I don't know. That's what, that's what he's talking about, and there was a log that was no. Moved. Well, there was a log that was there last year or the year before. It disappeared. We don't know where it went. So then it was wide open, 
and we're like, okay, it's, it's gone. And then this year, a tree fell across, but it's not completely bark, uh, uh, blocking it off. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the scenario, and I don't know who removed the other log, but someone did. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm thinking that we should probably, that the town should post that vehicles are not allowed on the property and that we should probably take steps to discourage, to make it more difficult for people to violate that. Can you make the signs? And do you, tell me exactly what you want them to say, and Ryan, do you have the ability to make them? Yeah, we make all kinds of signs. So okay. we can make whatever you want it to say, and we can put something across. We'll probably have to clean up the tree that's there now, and then Put something more formal off. across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I would say, Just, I would almost say something. We just want to prohibit motor vehicles. I mean, I think we're no I unauthorized not. vehicles. No, not no vehicles. unauthorized. That's a great way to put it. And if you've got the granite there, that way people know that the town is going to be bringing in vehicles to mop. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's great. Yeah, un unauthorized is good. Um, and my thought is, no one. I don't think I'm going to blink at a bicycle being on there. It's the motor. It's a motorbike. It's not anything with a motor. Or do you think there's? I, I've never witnessed that myself. What's that? Yeah, we've never seen that. Okay. So um, I think that's a, a that, that does seem that does seem to be the complaint, and yeah. so it's like, and then then there's the then there's the report of um, some private property being stored on. But this, this is on the roller rink, and I don't know what I don't so, know how they relate. So there is an old that's more like a house that's on the lakeside. It's actually on the yeah. He's saying the it was supposed to be brought taken down. It was at one time. It was. So we were going to be taking it down. I think the problem was was that they found some sort of defect in the taking, and it and it paused yeah. the work for for taking that building down. So. Um, oh yeah, that's in tax title. That's one of our problem children. Yeah. Yeah. So. So the only way we would have to take it down, we could actually, even while it's in tax title, reapply to the, was it the Attorney General that we were taking down abandoned buildings with? We could potentially get it, get funded to take it down even though we don't own the, pro the premises yet. Might be an option. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think his, his concern is the fact that somebody's parking on that property, again, motor vehicles that are unauthorized. But if it's not our property yet, that's one of the things we'd have to look into because mm. we can't enforce not parking on something that's not ours. True. So we'll have to go down Is there and find out if there are vehicles being parked on the property and if so are they on the town's park or are they on the private property that is in tax title? Are they side by side? I thought they were across that, the street. That's not going to be an obvious thing just because I've been down there. There's actually like a really weird property line there, I, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it's obvious, that that would be nice. We could we if could ask obvious, we, we could ask Al to look because he's better at property he's lines than probably else. anybody yeah. else. So could we? Just... Yeah, and I'll yeah, check. Just... I'll check with um, Amy about where we are in tax title on that. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Twice, twice a year. This twice year? a year. Sometimes three times. <laughs> but it's a town-owned property, and it's been designated as a park. Mm -hmm. So we have a vested interest in mowing it. Yeah. Re reading this, I get that it could very well be that the uh, that the vehicles are being parked on the uh, on the roller rink property. That's what the email implies. Yeah. That's yeah. And if that's the case, we don't. I don't think we have standing to take any action yet. Okay. Unfortunately. Amy's working on it. All right, so I don't think we need to vote anything. So Final we, where, sign where is the granite going to go, and is it going to hinder you from going in and do, out? Do you, are, does it need to be granite? No, it doesn't, but I thought it would kill two birds with one stone because the granite. The, the fire department would really like the granite moved out of there so the rest of the lawn to be mowed back there. And it would put something that people are less likely to try and drag out of the Oh, way. yeah, no, I know that. 
So, but if that's access for the town vehicles, that changes that completely. No, there's a gate on the other. There's two end, There's two access points. That one we don't need to use really. That could be just for walking. The other one is a gate mm -hmm. that we can get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah I figured okay. this would solve everybody's problems. We move that over there, it's out of there, and then that's got something that nobody's we'll going to drag we'll, out of the way. As I say, yeah, if you want to use something else, I would say use your judgment, but the fire department would appreciate the granite going away, sounds like. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you put a gate up on the other entrance? Is there a log or something? Well, that's the cost. right way to do it. Uh, it so would. You, do you, you do use that as a, for emergency use? And then finally gets blocked off. Oh, if there's a fire. Yeah. Use what if there's a fire? They. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not familiar with the. Uh, oh. So is that. Are yeah, we, that's, that's. That is. Good. So we say that. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that either. Yeah. A, a gate or like a, you know, like a cable with a, with a lock that they have act, that they have the, the, uh, um, uh, the key to connect it. key or, con or, uh, or, uh, combination. Mm -hmm. Oh, cables. That's scary. Yeah, I don't know. Are they? That, well, yeah, if you're on a motorcycle, you might not see it. You might decapitate somebody. Mm -hmm. and I have a That's friend true. who actually died that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. So, so gate. 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 Right. So then they can get clobbered and take well, just get Well, you know, they don't see the gate, then they're not there in the right home. Can I check with Peter and see how, how much he needs access there? Yeah. Yeah. Can run that yeah. by him because it would be really easy just to put like four stones there, big boulders. It'll look natural and easy. But I would say I would say that if, if Peter is comfortable with putting that there and putting the stones there so that vehicles can't get through and it's a permanent more permanent solution, then I'm good with it. I mean, if he doesn't have a concern. Yeah, and, and if then, not, then we need to take a look at maybe the similar to the gate that Autobahn put on that damn road up to the to, yeah. to the pond that doesn't exist yeah, anymore. Do okay. And then, do we need to, if, uh, if Peter says he does want a gate, do we need to authorize that, or is that something Ryan can just do based on what we Well, you can about? authorize it now based on what um, he talks about with Peter. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll take a motion to that effect. I make a motion that we um, authorize Ryan to pursue um, the best means to restrict motor traffic on the property. Uh, known as the campground, um, and that he have, uh, per, with consult from the fire department, for the appropriate means to restrict that traffic. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. That's your first motion of the evening, folks. <laughs> I yes. think that does well. All right. Um, what do we do? Out of respect to Ryan, we've got two other things that touch on him on the agenda. So I would like a motion to, to take items 8 and 13 on the agenda next. Do you have that motion? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Agenda item 8, highway cell phone reimbursement. Brad, this was your concern? Uh, so it was brought to my attention that Ryan is operating a second or operating a business on the side and the question was is the select board aware that Ryan is also operating a business it was questioned whether he was doing it within uh, business hours or not and I brought it up to Kelly she said how do I know it's Ryan what do you have for evidence I looked at the website I looked at Facebook the one thing that we picked up was that the cell phone that was attached to it was Ryan's cell phone, which was the only way we figured out this was actually Ryan's business. And it was determined uh, by the town accountant that we can't be reimbursing someone's cell phone in full if... If they're using it for private purposes. Correct. So. Well, that's kind of weird. Not Mr. No, because it's a business. <laughs> oh, because it's, Not Mr. it's a private business. <laughs> it's a private business, got yeah, it. We because can't yeah. fund somebody else's business expense. Is basically what she's saying. So, so she's not going to approve payments for reimbursing the fall. So, but if we were, if it were used just for personal purposes and for work purposes, that would be okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well. Well, and, and so we partially, we partially reimburse people for people for people who use their cell phones in a dual purpose. Mm -hmm. We pay. Oh, okay, you get this much. I don't know what it is. Um, for people to use their personal phone for town business. Okay. But 
but then we don't pay the whole bill. Okay. We reimburse the whole um, cell phone bill in this particular instance. Okay. And because we reimburse the whole cell phone bill, it is considered by the government uh, that the phone actually belongs to the town. So we can't allow the phone to be used for the business if we reimburse it in full. Which is why she's not so, going to so, reimburse it. So can we okay. reimburse at the same rate that we are other people partially? I don't think so phones? because it's not a personal phone. I think it's because it's being used uh, for it's a business. A business. It's, it's the business, business thing that throws it off. Is, so is the is uh, go ahead, Ryan. This was part of my employment agreement and I'm kind of just putting this out there. Don't, don't was, bang it on the microphone. Sorry about that. <laughs> this was a deal that was made with me from the start. Uh, right, but it was, right. it was a, supposed to be a personal cell phone, and I think at the time we m may not have been aware of the fact that there was a business being run off of the phone. Not arguing that. Okay, so that's that, and what's, so, the the, what's the so date that's, of that document? May 6, 2019. Yeah, and, and I remember that, because that was part of actually the negotiation. I was going to yeah. say that was part of the negotiation of his contract, yeah. was the mm -hmm. fact that we were going to reimburse his but personal his cell phone. contract was void after three years. Right. So, yes, it's a problem. I don't have a contract, though. Yeah. Well, it was a hiring. It was like a, yeah. I think because I'm hourly. Yeah. So you can still have a contract and be hourly, but yeah. but the point is that you made a promise, right? Well, we we made a promise, and but I think to and Ryan just made the same statement. At the time, we weren't necessarily aware that it was a business use phone. Mm. As it may not have been at the time. I didn't know that was an issue anyway because I mean, I use it. It's it's a personal. It, I own the phone. I buy my own phone, okay, the reimburse for the bill. I wasn't trying to get away with anything. So let the town go buy a phone for them then. I think we, we offered that at the time. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I said. So, so why don't we just, instead of, because you, you, you guys made an agreement with them to pay it. Just because it's three years down the road, you don't typically take benefits away from someone no. because he no longer has the contract after three years. No. Why don't we just call it something different, a stipend? Because it's not. He submits a bill for reimbursement. Uh, I guess. As long as no, he's doing no, I see where he's getting at. Let's call it, let's put a new line item on his expense account for a stipend for the time it takes him to take calls after hours, because you take them after hours, right? And weekends, oh, nights. Yeah, 20 So, right, I call you after hours, right? So, why don't you just call it a stipend and don't call it cell phone reimbursement? Just give them whatever that fee is on an annual basis and just don't take anything away, but don't break the law or, or it's probably more an ethical thing, right? Because you can't take more than what, 30 to 40 dollars from someone as a town employee. Or was it, what's the, what is it, 49 dollars or something? It's 49, but. Yeah, so but, but my point is, don't take it away from them, but just call it something different. And that would have to wait till a town meeting, but it's definitely something that might be an option. I think I have a solution. No? Just buy a phone phone, that's all. Yeah. I think I have a solution. You just download, it, download an app, it's just like a line. I have two lines on my phone. One comes in from Skype, one comes in on my regular line, and I pay Skype five bucks a month to that separate line. So when I, when I pick up my phone, I say, oh, this is, you know, one of pack ships calling me, oh, no, now it's notary's calling me, you know, before I even use the phone. Well, Jacob, if, if I could actually, I no, I do, and maybe Jacob could chime in. I mean, with the VOIP, is there anything that we have through bundled services, like through Teams, where we can assign a phone number? Yeah, yeah, we could do uh, we do a phone uh, with a line for him through Teams, and if he has the app on his phone, he could. So he would take there. his town calls through the app, and then right, it still comes to the same phone. Yeah. 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 So yeah. You'll see that it comes yeah. from. Yeah. It would, it, but it would uh, it would give you two separate numbers. You'd have a town number and you would have another. And if you go on vacation, we can set up. Phone. What's that? You're not, you're not, you're not, I think still there's, I think this there's it's still a bill for his business phone, regardless right. of whether he has an app or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, question. Is the agreement that we will pay for your cell phone service? Okay, so so the device, so you're responsible to provide your own device. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the town has no interest in his physical device. We haven't. We have, we are paying for his service. That's, uh, that's 
Yeah. You're going to have to take this up with Lori. If he does. Because she's pay. not going to pay that bill again unless you find a legal reason to do it. And all these semantics mm -hmm. and pretending it's not what it is is mm -hmm. not going to fly with her. Mm -hmm. But the Rich's, the Rich's idea is the most viable at this point because. Mm -hmm it creates the same monetary benefit right. that he's getting now, but it's, but it's legal. And yeah. it's transparent. And it's yeah. transparent. Yeah, yeah, and basically make it be like a telecommunications stipend. Or right, whatever. or something like that. Yeah. You know, Maybe you just put hours in for your time when you take time to take someone's call. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think the town's getting a great deal at that. Yeah, basically. I would. Yeah, nobody wants to take it away from him. Right. We just want to make right. it no, legal. I get it, I get it. Right, yeah. It's, I'm just, I'm just thinking, if we make it a stipend and not a, co a committed reimbursement, then when the cell phone company tweaks its fees from this, the, the we need more of your money fee goes from $1.23 to $1.29. What's the annual? I'm not going to worry about that. What's, what's right, the that's, 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 that's cool. We're not, yeah, so, what's the annual cost? So, 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks for the year. Yeah. Would you exceed that in overtime if you put in overtime fee calls? I would say possibly. <laughs> Who is your carrier that you're paying twelve hundred bucks a year? That's hundred dollars bucks a month. Man, you don't I have mean, any I, friends I, or I, family. I, 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 I get three lines for that. And I know no, they're no cheaper, but Verizon has the best cell phone service right In here where I work. Mm -hmm. Honestly, That's, I don't. I don't. This is where I need it. So yeah, I don't have the best. Two fifty. I think hundreds of. So what do you have, Verizon? It's the best around. Wow. We're so $50 a month. Um, so Unlim is $50 right a month, out. unlimited data, unlimited oh. texting, unlimited wow. phone calls. That's AT&T. So would we want to structure this as a, uh, he would be eligible for the partial subsidy uh, that everyone in town who uses their phone, and then we, we top you it up. You have got to take it up with take Lori. It up with Lori. It's a business phone. Well, but I and guess the question is. Well, well, I think I think I think we have to be careful. So I, I think we do have to be careful, though. And Put your wife's cell phone on your business page. <laughs> Problem solved. She can't solve. get all the calls. Huh? She can't get all the calls. <laughs> <laughs> she won't know how to answer them. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. But um, you could also use the second. You'd have like a second line for the business, and then it wouldn't be on there, and then you'd use your main line for the. A second phone number. Right. Have a second phone number. It would still ring the phone because you own the phone. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So your number, pretty much what they pay for, would be just for town stuff. So. Yeah. And personal stuff. Yeah. I'm open to so. however you want to do it. Yeah, I think I think we'll have to explore our options on we this just one. Just put it on all for now. And we'll why don't Why don't we, Why don't we do this? Did you want to talk to Lori about the the excruciating detail about this? And then Ryan, would you be willing to excruciating detail? Would you? I, well, that's that's <laughs> why I volunteered you for it, even though you're the guy in charge. And then Ryan, would you mind exploring with some of the smart folks in the room some sure. of the options you have for yep. disconnecting your business from your current phone? Because that would get rid of the the problem. Or disconnecting or, or, your business from your town num reimbursed number. Let's, let's mm -hmm. be yeah. words separating that. your business from the from the, the from the Thank service you. that we're paying for. <laughs> or this is not great. sufficiently separating it but to, to meet legal muster. I, I really what, what if I just, just get paid? What if I just get compensated the amount of money? Clean, it is never a question. About yeah, but that's great for next. But we can't. Yeah, but the, well, the reason why I'm so saying we need to take a look at it. Yeah, we could do yeah, that. Yeah, negotiate special. your wage for well, I mean, cause more. Yeah, <laughs> just compensate me differently, and I just pay then, my cell phone. Yeah, but that's all pension benefitable and all that. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, all right. Or, or we could just get him a, a town phone on a cheaper service and publicize that number, and you can tell people to call you back on the, the other number and you can be a sad dual phone person like me. That's what I was trying to not be, but. <laughs> well, I have multiple numbers and they're all in eSIMs on my, so I only have one phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Chairman. Oh, with each SIM. Uh, yeah, Dave, go ahead. I talked to Brad before the meeting and you heard, you heard him say that when we discussed the cell phone that I could speak at the time. Um, he, 
went to him and said that whole crap was complaining that I complained about his phone. Um, I did how, not say whoa, 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 stop, 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 <laughs> stop. Go ahead. How is, oh, wait, 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 wait. How is this relevant to the discussion of reimbursing Ryan for his cell phone? Are, we, are, are you complaining about people talking about you when you're not around? No, I'm talking about a selectman saying things to him which were not true, and he came to me and accused me of saying things that I didn't say because of one of your selectmen. One of my selectmen? So he's that he's the tell. To, he that has something to do with the cell phone. He, no, it does not have yes, anything to do with the cell phone. It has to do with your. It has to do with your conversation with the selectman. Wait, I suggest you take this matter up with the selectman in question. He is not, or she. I don't know who you. Talk, I suspect I know who you're talking to. You know what? That's fine. Yeah. The select the select board member that you talk to is not mine. We are all serving here at the town's pleasure, and if you have a problem with what they said, that is not for me to adjudicate. That is for you to talk to them about. Because this happened outside the meeting. This happened outside of open meeting. I have no bearing on what people say outside of open meeting. I just gave you the reason to how I found out about this and how I found out about the phone number. This is done. Okay. This is done. We're moving on. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not entertaining a wine on. I am not entertaining a wine on open meeting. You can when you when you I fine. You can you can complain to me outside open meeting well, all you I'm want. I'm not going to complain to you. I'm going to talk to Brad. Oh, okay. okay. I have no use That's to talk to you. Can I just get clarification on one thing? If he gets his own service, telephone service for his business line, it doesn't matter who that plans, right? This is his phone. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So yeah. I have a solution for you. Don't talk after the meeting. Okay. We'll that is correct. Down. Yes. Okay. Right. I think that's what Brad was suggesting. So yeah, so this, 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 yeah, this that is what Brad was suggesting. All right, suggesting. All right yeah. excellent. Um, the other item agenda, uh, the last one I think we need you for, Ryan, yeah. is uh, number 13, encroachment on town right of way. And so we, this came up last time. I don't think you were here, but uh, yeah, no, was, this was something this, that I was, I was researching something completely different, and just happened to stumble across this um, state law. So, hold on a second here. Let me find the right folder. Dave, you mow it, you own it. I have so many folders. Um, when, when we were discussing the issue on, was it Henry something road? With the, the retaining wall? Henry Allen. It was thought at the time that because it had been there for so long that it was grandfathered. Well, it's not. And if anything is in the town right of way um, under general law chapter, I believe it's 86, section 3, we have, if it's not there prior to May 26, 1917, at any point the select board has the authority to order encroachments into the right of way mm -hmm. to be removed. So I felt it was important that you knew that going forward. Mm -hmm. So if a similar issue comes up, you may you may choose differently, or you may um, Ryan may have an issue where he needs something removed, and it's not grandfather. Mm -hmm. it, it can be removed, and mm -hmm. if. Under Section 4, if any building fence or other encumbrance is adjudged as a nuisance, in order to be abated, the materials may be sold at auction, the proceeds applied to the payment of the express prosecution and removal of, and if insufficient, the court may order the remainder to be levied upon the property of the defendant. Mm -hmm. So not only can you order them to remove it, they have to pay for it to be removed. Not that you would ever use this, mm -hmm. but it's good to have in your back pocket. Yes, it is. Uh, that is good to know. Um, on and a I, related note, if there were, if someone had their property in the town right of way, and someone someone on town business were to um, bump into it by accident and damage it. Would that, does this law also absolve us of any responsibility since their property is in the right of way? Yes, it does. Okay. Because it shouldn't be in the right of way. It's, it's an encumbrance. It is 
encroaching on the public way. Okay, that's that's what I thought, but I wanted to confirm that. Yeah. Okay. You're not responsible to replace something that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's so, Ryan. So. In, in the future, if there is a complaint and it turns out to be in the right of way, it's like, I think we have the answer. And they can. But, but please don't take that as a license no, and take out every no. mailbox in town. <laughs> well, so, yes, please be respectful. No, this is very specific to uh, fences I and think obstructions it's in the road. Sorry. Right. What's that? The mailbox is allowed to be on the edge of the road. Yeah. yeah. So yes. I don't know if that falls under this. No, it does. This no, it's, not a, it's not an obstacle or a wall. So. <laughs> talking about fences and retaining walls. I know. So you and I had a conversation also on town policies in regards to this. Yes. And I know you were questioning about having additional town policies done in this regard. So if you want to bring that up. Yeah, there's a lot. There's other towns using more current policies. Uh, so this, this is state this law. Is state you want to, if you want to create a policy that adds a little more teeth to this or gives us a process, that's a really great idea because it gives uh, a like for continuity, um, continuity yes. purposes for boards coming forward, and highway superintendents coming forward because right nobody lives forever, so we're all going to be out of here at some point. They will have a map. They'll have a road map of how and what is supposed to be done and when you use it, then you'll have set precedent on how and what yeah. is supposed to be done. Yeah, I would like to look at that for the future. Consider mm -hmm. your policy a CMR to the Massachusetts General Law. Right. <laughs> All right, anything else on this issue? Do you want to write the policy, Ryan? Or get uh, CMR? To be honest with you, I'm going to look at the, the policy that the other towns have in place and could like just slightly modify it for us. Yeah. But sure. but I'll bring that to the board before. Yeah, do know. it and shoot it over and I'll I'll check it for yep. legality and then the board can review it and okay. approve it or Okay. It'll probably be fine if it's already in somebody else's town, so Oh probably. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. But it's po it's possible. It's happened before. All right, Ryan, I don't see anything else on the agenda that might need you, so right. it's like, and if we need you, we'll call you. I'm going to stay a few minutes. Sure. All right, uh, let's see. So uh, that brings us back to the uh, agenda in order number six, changes in vote tabulators, cast precinct optical voting tabulator. Um, Mike has not returned yet. He must have run for good. Okay, well, let's just move well, on to the next one. Do we need him? No, we don't. Um, we don't actually need him for this. The town voted to give Mike permission to get an upgraded tabulator. Mm -hmm. In order for that to happen, the board needs to vote to remove the other, to discontinue the other one. This was mistitled. Okay. Um, so we're, we're actually discontinuing the AccuVote optical scan tabulator and replacing it with the image cast precinct optical tabulator. Da -da 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 -da. And it's in your in your packet so you can read the motion. Um, Brad, do you want to read the motion? Uh, I don't motion, motion to vote the use of the image cast pre precinct tabulator at the primary for states. Where are you saying that? It's on the bottom of the actual form. It's the second paragraph. Uh oh, I think it's the second paragraph is what yeah, that's what I was recommending. Yeah. Next to him. But you just need to read the rest of it and make that your motion. Okay, so I make a motion per MGL chapter fifty four, section thirty four. We hereby vote the use of the image cast precinct tabulator at the primary for state senate on October tenth, twenty twenty three, and thereafter at all primaries and elections held in the town of Brookfield until otherwise ordered by vote of the select board of Brookfield. Second. Well, we'll oh, a little more. Further, the town will discontinue the use of the AccuVote optical scanner in all elections held in the town of Brookfield. Second. All right. Any discussion? Good. All in favor, say aye. 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 And this is a signature, all of us. Down to Kelly when it's done, please. All right, item number seven, discharge of lien. Have a signature item. Thank you. So. 
this is another of the um, community uh, CDBG Thank community you development block grant grants that yes. fund and this the, is the FY eighteen block grant. Mm -hmm. Are we effectively the loan's been paid back, and so we don't we don't need to lean on the property anymore? That is correct. The loan has been paid in full. All right. Yes. Can I ask the address of that? Uh, yes. The address is Four Hyde Street. Ms. Doris Fenton is the name. Where are you going with that? Um, uh, as I understand it, the uh, as part of the uh, town resident getting a loan, the um, the town guarantees the loan and takes out a lien against the property as security against it, against them having to pay, against us having to pay back the loan. The loan that we guaranteed has been paid off, so the town has no interest or need in a lien on the property anymore. So the select board is being is being is considering releasing that lien since we don't since it seems we don't need it anymore. I don't. It's like if they want to sell the house, the lien just slows things down, and we have no need for it. So why hassle? Them? is my attitude. I don't think we have a legal right to keep it in place either once it's paid. But I'm sorry, what? I said I don't think we have a legal right to keep it in place once it's paid. Yeah, it's paid, you, off. It could be yeah, paid, it's off, paid off. You can't, you can't yeah. decide. You can't vote to say, nope, we're not going to release your lien. You have yeah. to. We, 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 we have paid. to do it. OK. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll take a motion. Um, I'll make a motion that we discharge the lien on uh, 4 Hyde Street. Uh, second. Yeah, yeah. How'd that come about anyway? Their attorney sent us a letter. Oh. I just said that was kind of weird. Hmm? Nope. So no, she could have been refinancing and they wouldn't subordinate. And so when you refinance, you're required to pay it off. She could be selling, she could be transferring it into a trust. I see. For her kids, there are a lot of different reasons they why. They just reached the full term of the loan. No, because if, once you reach the full term of the loan, it's forgiven. Because it gets forgiven over time based on this program. Uh, this money doesn't come from the town, it comes I, from I a grant. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's not a loan, it's more of a, it's a grant that's earned off? Yeah, yeah, okay. so the longer you own the house, the less you owe on the particular Yeah, the grant. idea being you don't take the grant, improve the house, and then flip it on the improvement. Correct. Right. It's, it's right. You, you, you have to, the grant is for you to enjoy the benefit, and when you've enjoyed the benefit long enough, the if grant is for you. If you lived there 10 years, I think you pay, you only pay off half of it if you sell. If you lived there 15 years, then it's paid in full. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. I've seen yeah. them at twenty. Yeah. You got to be it's for you gotta be in the house for twenty. Yeah. yeah. They, they they all have their own schedule, but yep. it seems like the uh, it seems like the, the 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 need for the lien has expired. They have earned off their grant. So if you would sign that on behalf okay. of the board, uh, did we vote? I if you vote, well, I know Beth. I made a motion. Motion. Okay. Brad? Second. All right. All in favor of releasing the lien for Four Hyde Street, please say aye. 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 All right. And Sign the original, Tom, and I will notarize it later. All right, that's okay. It'll Are you I'm here? Okay, and you'll fill out the so date, so. Can you channel your inner me for the rest of the agenda? <laughs> I will try. I'm trying my best. Just sign it. I'll fill in the rest. I. Uh, All right, you did the rest. What? what? I am a notary. <laughs> Pass it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll fill in the rest of it. So. All right, um, Don this Hebert, longevity so payment. Brad, I think that was your request. Yeah, so I talked to Don and um, he had mentioned how he's been here 34 years and that he would be retiring. And the question was about his longevity pay, if he would receive it, and I wasn't sure. And went to Kelly and um, I guess that's more of a de decision of the select board to whether we want to... No, it's not. No. no. He was voted to have his longevity. He's entitled to his longevity. The only issue is, every it, the way it's written, the way the, the, the longevity is written, it's at the end of the year. So he's going to get it in fall. He's been here way more enough years to get the whole boat, right? That wasn't a good sentence. Anyway. Um, he's maxed it out. But everybody gets paid at the end of the fiscal year. So he'll get whatever he's getting when he separates. And then in July, he'll get a check for his longevity. I don't see a problem with that. So okay. it so shouldn't be prorated. It should, he should get the whole thing. So there's right. nothing to vote. Or, or do we have to vote on paying the full 
No, you don't. He's particles. entitled to okay. the whole thing. No, she's no. informing he, 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 has, he, has to, he just has to wait, wait. for the time when yeah. everyone gets their longevity payment. You and then might. I'm not sure. I would have to really look at the language very closely. You might have the ability to vote to give it to him at separation. So I think the real question was when, if, if he retires, if you retire during that year, does he get it? eligible for a longevity when they come at the end of the year? Is it? He is absolutely entitled to it because he far exceeds the maximum amount to what to to get the longevity. So he's absolutely entitled so, to the entire so, thing. So do people? So do employees vest in the longevity on the first day of the year, but we don't pay it till the last day of the year? I think they vest on their anniversary date of employment. And when is his? But they're paid on the last day of the year. But when they're paid on the last day. When of is the his year. anniversary date? Thirty-three years ago, which the maximum <laughs> is twenty, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no. You see, but to me, anniversary date means like if I'm if I start work on September first, my anniversary date is September first. Right. But I think what she's saying is he's already so far exceeded past the twenty years; it doesn't really matter. Well, correct. He's exceeded. He is. Ex yeah, I, 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 sti I stipulate accessibility 13 years ago. No, I, yeah, no, I, I, I stipulate that he has enough time for this. The question is, um, on what day of the fiscal year does it does it vest? So why does, did he get it July 1st? Yeah, yeah, because, because it because wasn't just, voted, and it's paid. It wasn't. It was voted for FY 24 to be paid at the end of the year, which is the fiscal year. Right, so okay. he'll get. Everybody will get their longevity. Well, not everybody, because they didn't, well, they didn't put we'll enough money to pay everybody. They, they did the math wrong at the meeting, so there's not enough money to pay everybody. So that's also going to be at a special town meeting. So. Or those who got the math wrong. Hmm? <laughs> Nothing. Well, it was, it was the okay, so extra people that gave the actual number that mm -hmm. the town voted, and it wasn't enough. They yep. should have put what they wanted, plus what the town had already calculated for other employees, and they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we're short. How much? About 13000 Really? How much are we short? Uh, you know. 13000 you so, said? Yeah, I don't want to give you the number, because I might be misremembering, but okay. we have it in a spreadsheet. Oh, that's, a, that's a, OK, that's a, uh, we have it in a spreadsheet. there's a comma in there, so it catches my attention. Yes. OK, that's really there's what Sure. All right. So, uh, so Ryan, while you're here, if you want to let Don know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely entitled to the board. All right. Uh, number 10, correct the personnel uh, appointment terms. So, to do, Kelly? I was perusing the bylaws and realized that when you appointed everybody in your list of blanket appointments, the appointment, the, the, the dates were wrong. They're supposed to be three-year staggered terms, not annually. We've been appointing people annually, just kind of as an on autopilot. Mm -hmm. um, For which committees, all of them? Pretty much. Some of them are some annual, are but several, some, some of them are three year. not. Some of them are three-year, but they're not staggered anymore because people came off and went on, and you've got, you know, 13 okay. people all leaving on the same year. So this particular committee, you have you had five members on the committee. You have three now. Um, Amy did not want to be reappointed. She has a serious issue, and she asked me to discuss this with you. You reappointed the chairman of this committee, who stood up at town meeting and completely went around the personnel board to get that raise, mm. which violated the town bylaws. And she's the chairman of the committee, and she doesn't want to serve on a committee with somebody who would do that. Do that. So she's asked not to be put back on the committee. Mm. And I honestly do not have time to do this anymore. So you have three members. If you choose to re reappoint all three of them, they need to be staggered. So are the original reappointments void, or are the original reappointments, we need to adjust the reappointments? We need to re-reappoint them to staggered terms. You need to. We have, we have a couple choose, of questions. If you choose to reappoint all three people, you need to re-reappoint them. You need to adjust their terms to staggered mm -hmm. terms. Yes. But I guess my question is, did we 
Have they been reappointed, or are those, is that? They that? have. You okay. reappointed them in June for, for okay. the fiscal yeah. so, year. So we're, we're adjusting their appointment. To, to me, well, we're there's, two, there's two problems. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them is implied, mm -hmm. and one of them is explicit. The explicit one is that, the, that when we did the reappointment to the personnel committee, it sounds like we did one-year appointments. We did everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, without a real consideration as to the, the actions and conducts of the people who were appointed. Because yes. of that, in part because of that, we now have some requests not to get reappointed. Mm -hmm. So one, in order to have stability on the committee, if we're going to keep three people who are still currently willing to serve, we need to put a different service dates on the appointment. We also may want to just reconsider, and I think what we would have to do is make a motion to rescind the appointment, rescind the appointment right, and determine if we then have a more functional committee with people who are dedicated to honoring the intent of the committee. Mm -hmm. So. Um, who are the people, who's, who in total did we reappoint originally? You originally reappointed Holly Chisholm, Douglas Ford, and Linda Lincoln. Okay. And eight, the treasurer had asked not to be reappointed. Okay. So. Um, and I had asked not to be reappointed because like I said, I don't have time. Right. So, I guess the question that I would have, right, is, um, do we know for certain that Amy would accept the appointment if we did not reappoint Linda? I do not. I do not know that. But we do have another person who is interested, pending the outcome of this discussion, okay, who I shall not name, okay. <laughs> pending the outcome of this discussion. <laughs> gotcha. At, at their request. And that's fair. Okay. So, um, not it as well. Um, <laughs> so, if we only vote two people on, we don't technically have a, a functional personnel committee. We absolutely do because of the new bylaw. Ooh, that's correct. Is any amount is a quorum, even if yep, it's only they'll, two? Yeah, they'll have to both meet all the time, but the, that right. committee meets together all so the time. So, I am perfectly fine with rescinding our vote. Do you know what the date was of our vote? It's, it June should be. June 29th, probably. It was the June meeting. Uh, yeah, it was that last one. Yeah, so so I make a motion. So I, I'll go ahead and make that motion, and even though I'm sure I'll get a telephone call at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll make a motion to rescind the original personnel committee appointment vo votes of uh, June 2023 um, for the personnel committee. Rescind all? Are you? We're gonna. I'm gonna start by just rescinding them all. Okay, no, I, and I, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. I want to make sure I understood what you were motioning. Yes, I am motioning that we rescind all of our votes from June relative to the personnel committee. All of our appointments from June. Mm -hmm. That's my motion. Um, okay. And how do we reappoint? Well, do we have another motion yeah. to, do to we appoint have, the folks that I care to? Do we have a do we have a second for the motion? Okay, for second. Process? All right. So, um, what is the just thinking? I thinking ahead. We can we can rescind it and then we can appoint. And if we appoint two people, we have a functioning committee. Because two people's a committee. If that's all we got. It's like it's like two people. If they both meet, can can make a quorum yeah. and can make a functioning committee. They can, even though they might get a hung jury on some yeah, items, some, they, some they, they are technically a committee mm -hmm. of two. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Rich. I have a problem with this. I'll tell you what. We changed the bylaw on how, on how vacations are allotted to people that have been here a certain amount of time. And that was specifically done for Amy. Right? No, no. That had nothing, nothing to do. It had nothing to do with Amy. It affected multiple employees. That had nothing to do. Why did we? Amy, Amy started. Um, well, she took. Oh, she benefited. From no, she. 
Who no, the, no, the change the change was effective in fiscal year twenty four. Amy started at the beginning at the very beginning of fiscal year twenty three, right? Yeah. Twenty two. Oh, twenty two. Yeah. So she had it was so water under the bridge. It was, years because of of the, it was because of the experience that she had coming in as a new employee that she recommended that change happen, but it did not positively impact her in during the time period. It was a learning from bringing in people that it was just ridiculous that that's the way that we treated them on the way in the door. So no. So yeah. So multiple seems, people at the highway department. This just department. seems retaliatory to Linda. What you guys are doing, like that's how I see it. Anyone has a right to make a motion on the town hall floor to do what she did, and I think it's she does. Retaliatory. Well, I, the way I see it, Linda is chair of the personnel committee, okay. and as chair of the personnel committee, and since she's in that role, if she wanted those changes. She, my, I, my thought is her first thing should have been to try and make that happen through the personnel committee. She completely bypassed the committee that she's a chair of, and she did things that are within her right. Absolutely. But, but it is our response. But what it's like if the chair of the personnel committee is bypassing their committee and going to town floor to get raises. How does that make the personnel committee look? It makes it look like it's yeah. it's useless. It, it's just like she, it's just she like has not served the personnel, the town, and the personnel committee so well by she what she did. did. So if, if, if what you're saying she did, like, but now it looks retaliatory, what you guys are doing. That's how I see it. So. Um, she, she serves at the pleasure of the slot board. It, yeah, it, so, and, so, and, but to a, but to a certain so extent, still but, but we, we are, you can say retaliatory, but it's like, but to me, it's like, she's, she's done something. It's like, we appoint her. She's done something that we don't like. It's the personnel committee, the personnel board's not an independent board. It's a, to my to my mind, it's a. So it's, it, it's, it's, I would say she. I would say that, in this case, the behavior was sufficiently egregious to warrant a reaction. I mean, if someone on a committee votes a way I don't like, and I say I'm going to kick you off the committee if you don't vote this way, then that's coercion. And then they, if they vote the, their conscience and I kick them off, that to me is that to me is much more of a rank retaliation. To, to me, this is more of a we think that she. Or, I'm sorry, not we. I think, in my opinion, this behavior warrants consideration of saying, is she an appropriate, per, is, is her serving on the personnel board appropriate given her behavior at town meeting and basically short circuiting <coughs> the personnel board? I understand that it is, it is a response to her behavior and is a negative response. And I can understand why some people might consider it retaliation. It's a, but. I, I, I see it on the other side of the line. I understand your point, Rich. I, I, can, I can see why you might think that way. I, I didn't necessarily, like, I, I didn't vote to like her in for the race, right? But mm -hmm. I, I'm not holding Linda against it. And I don't hold it but against the anyone they the board. Went. Excuse me, one minute. I'm sorry. I don't hold it against anyone how they vote at an annual town meeting. And I feel like that's what's happening I, right now. So but to me, it's not her vote. It's that she made the motion that she brought it up. Make the motion that it yeah, and she, and any, anyone can. And, and that's her personal. She was not acting as a board when she did it. But that was but Linda Lincoln that did it. Not, she didn't say I'm the chairman of the board. I'm, I'm on the board. Linda Lincoln personally did it. And I think it looks retaliatory. So, okay. you, you so every, everybody else has gone through the personnel board to do this. And even if they said no, then they can go make their plea at, at, at the town meeting. But they went to the personnel board first. This is, this is somebody who is supposed to know these rules. This is an actual bylaw that was violated. So if they don't discuss this, and whatever the decision is, the decision is, but if they don't discuss this, is she getting favoritism because she's on the committee? It can be seen from both ways. There are several well, questions. It's a personnel bylaw. To me, if she was on the advisory board and did it, then it would be a different thing. Not the personnel bylaw. Not, but the personnel, the personnel bylaw, bylaw says you have to go to the personnel committee to do this. To get their approval, yeah. and as chair, she could have done it. She she yeah, controls so she the agenda. She, she she could have actually called the meeting specifically to to bring it through in an appropriate manner. You say appropriate, but I don't think an annual town meeting is an inappropriate manner. If it was at a so our town bylaws state that 
it should have gone through the personnel board prior to it getting brought to town meeting that way. And if there's anyone that ought to be cognizant of our bylaws, I would think that the person who used to be the custodian of the bylaws would have the least excuse, who's also the chair of the committee that that bylaw pertains to, to choose to kind of fundamentally go rogue, right? I, and I and it, get what you're saying. It, okay. I'm just the, the way that this is going, it, it just seems retaliatory to me. Sitting here, at, like, I don't have any stake in any right. part of mm -hmm. the game. I'm you're telling right. you what it looks like. Right. So. But you have the right to do. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing is that is that fundamentally, we have to take a look at the the whole impression and and. And it may appear retaliatory to you. Failure to take any action to others makes it look like favoritism and not holding, people, kind of hold, there, holding so. people accountable, right? It's not even just other town employees. Well, I, no, there's residents. I, I mean, I mean, I got and and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be frank. I, I I wasn't paying enough attention and rubber stamped when we went ahead and did everybody's appointments and probably should have spoke up then. So I'll take the hit for just like geez this is part of like what we do every year let's go ahead and everybody that wants to serve because it's so yeah, hard I mean, to get people to serve you you, you do it right and and i'll i'll totally tell you what I, i'll take the hit for rubber stamping every appointment that we had in front of us that night i think there was only <laughs> one committee that we didn't vote on because we knew that there were some concerns about about what was going on there. i, I spoke okay. to kelly about that recently something about Appointments that just get rubber stamped because right. there's a guy that's been on different boards here that's totally incompetent and he gets rubber stamped at times. And like you need to look at right. someone's cognitive ability to be on the board as well. Yeah. And he's I would, not wrong. It would not be a bad idea for you to go through that entire list yeah. and I would, really look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and part of that is that it's. We've only got so many people willing to serve, and so it's and so sometimes it's hard to it's sometimes hard to say. Yeah, I know it's like we're gonna have to leave. We'd have to leave the chair open if we didn't reappoint a person um, due to uh, a, a concern similar to what you had. And and part of it is, it's like I I don't know about the rest of the board. I don't know all the people that serve on boards. I don't know. Uh, it's like after meeting them, I might say, yeah, that's. I have some concerns, or I may say, no, I don't. I don't see the concern. It's and so it's. Well, it's and you can put in an hour a week, or you could put in fifty hours a week. So I, yep. to, to that point, right? So I, I get. That. I feel like I put in fifty hours getting ready for today's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Th thank, thank you, Rich. Yep. All right, so um, so we have a motion to and rescind second. all the personnel board appointments, and it's been seconded. Uh, let's see, and so. And we can reappoint anyone we want, but hopefully the people we appoint want to be appointed. Correct. All right. Well, so. Well, right now we only have two people to reappoint. We would have. Um, yeah. Have Holly and and, uh, and Doug. 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 Mm hmm I mean, okay. So. And that and that and and a board. And you know, not to like throw a chink in this, but. This is being brought to your attention only because I realized that the, the terms were wrong and that when I asked why you weren't reappointed, this is what was brought up. So if I had been, you know, I, it didn't even dawn on me that she was on the, the planning, the uh, personnel board no I I, it, 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 I yeah. went right over my head at the yeah and, and honestly at the town meeting I after town meeting I had about 10 people march by me and 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 give me a WT I got over way the, more over, complaints over about the, it than anyone ever had yeah. any commendation about it yeah uh, relative and, and the specific complaint I got was relative to you're on the personnel board why didn't you handle it there mm -hmm. so um, yeah, and, and if it went to the personnel board and the personnel board said, well, we just don't agree with you, then by all means, means. you went through all the steps, that's bring it up at town meeting and do it there. Right. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. 
We had failed at the channeling your inner bath for the rest of the meeting, but that's okay. <laughs> just I, well, imagine what happened if I didn't channel my inner bath. That I think that it would, I do not think <laughs> that Amy will be willing to go back on. No, that's, and that's fine. And, and we're not doing it to put her back on. It's right. uh, it's it's that it's similar to the, what we went through with the conservation committee, right? Is it is it is is that we had the entire committee resign by virtue of saying we're not comfortable with how it's being managed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think there's times when you really have to listen to the to the people that are serving and say, "Hey, I'm not willing to re-accept appointment." And one of the reasons is is that this is the activity that I observe members of the board do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as hard as it is to get people to serve the town, I, I think we also have to listen when they say that they have concerns about how the the their peers are are conducting themselves right so mm -hmm. um, and, and and the process wasn't followed so um, that's all I got to say about that all right any further discussion mm -hmm. all right all in favor of rescinding all of the appointments to the personnel board uh, please say aye aye aye, aye. And now do we and now well now we have a completely vacant personnel board and we need to do something about it so i'd like to make so what is the pro i mean it seems like people just say hey i want to be on the committee and we appoint them i mean is there any resume that people are provided to or you know we have statement of why I don't they think, think you have the right to be that fussy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're not in a position to be that fussy. That, well, that's what I meant. I don't mean right. I mean position. You absolutely have the right. I, I'm in the position to be that fussy. Um, it's, it's good if we can attract people with some sort of background in whatever area that, that the committee governs or has act, actions on. I have no friends, so I'm going to have to go find them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have any that want to do anything. But, you know, we, we've had it up on the website. We've put it out in the paper. We've done little blurps um, that we need people to volunteer. And part of the reason people don't volunteer is meetings go seven hours. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, they, they don't like the bureaucracy, they don't have the time. I wish I had they time don't to like, They don't like what the, what the committee members are doing, you know, mm -hmm. other committee members are doing. So if you can get somebody that's willing to learn, that's I think as good as somebody who's got a background in it. I've, I've seen committee members that have backgrounds and things that are absolute nightmares. Mm -hmm. All right, so brings us back to the question. What are we going to do about our empty personnel board, our personnel committee? So I make a motion that we appoint um, Holly. It's what Holly Chisholm and Doug Bird. Yes. Yeah. And uh, for, uh, for terms uh, of. For terms of. One uh, should be one year, or uh, one should be two. Well, I, was I, was, I was going to say three. I was. I was going to say. I was going to say two and three. Do should we not ask Holly them to come three? in and quit, and, no. or at least? Talk to them before we appoint them to what you know what I'm we're, saying? Well, we're re we're reappointing, well, we're reappointing them. them to what should have been three year terms in the first place. We're just restaggering the board. Yeah. Okay. They were already appointed. They already accepted their appointment for one year. So if they don't want to serve past one year, they can always come yell at us. Okay. And then we can yeah. either modify their appointment or just make right. sure we have someone to backfill them. Yeah. So I would say Doug for two and Holly for three. Second. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, Brad, to, to your concern, my thought is, is that if we want to get to know the, um, the committee members better, we can definitely make a plan to do that. Tonight's not the night. No. All right. Uh, so all in favor of the appointment of Holly and Dan, Dave? Doug. Doug, thank you. Um, Holly and Doug to terms of three and two years, uh, respectively, to the personnel committee. Please say aye. 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 All right, thank you. Um, um, monthly report schedule um, in the interest of time. 
kick it out. I'd like to kick this one yes, out. Yes, yep. please. Right. <laughs> um, 350th committee, do we need to deal with that tonight, Brad? Uh, yeah, I would like, I mean, we, just, right, need, we just need to vote to extend the terms. Okay, oh, and that's right. And, the, and we, last we time couldn't we couldn't do it, do it because you have to recuse yourself. Right. right. All right, so. Uh, I'll make a motion that we extend the terms of Brad Kadelski and who is the other person? God, it was five. Oh. <laughs> Linda, Shelby, Christina, Stradella, and Don Taft. Okay, all of those people that he stated, I'm making the motion to extend their... At point two. To and the two. end of the year, correct? Okay. Yeah, I mean, we sh will be done once we have a meeting. We just haven't been able to okay. have a meeting. Okay, okay. Through, so. through December 31st. Sounds good. Okay. Did you second that? Well, you have to second it. Yeah, I can't oh, say anything about it. He can't say anything. Oh, oh okay. Oh, that's right. He, I'm, I'm so used to <laughs> needing him to second. Uh, I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, and he's recusing himself. Yep. Got it. All right. Um, so that was done. Brad Hughes. All right, now we, and that goes to here. All right, Coach Mount Time Riders, we already, we already talked covered. About the uh, Downtown Recovery Bill funding request clarification. Kelly, do we need okay, to close so this tonight? Yes, we do. We also right. have to do this, and it'll take me five minutes. So we were supposed to get $250 from the Downtown Recovery Fund, which was excess ARPA money from the state that they were going to give to all the towns, and we were just supposed to get it in the bank. So you said, okay, here's $80,000 for a fire system, and yep. here's 100 for the fixing of the upstairs. And so we said, okay, we've got people, we've got bids, we're gonna, we're gonna, we need, where's the money? It didn't hit the bank yet. We went mm. looking for it. It never got off the governor's desk, so nobody got it. Ooh, so there is a right. Money. So I need you to rescind the two votes for the ARPA, for the downtown recovery money, which is on your little spreadsheet. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I would like you to do is allocate the 177000 for those two projects combined that's remaining in the ARPA funds. Now, okay. we didn't get the grant for the Rice Corner Road culvert, so you don't need, you need those you funds. You don't need that either. So you actually have 200 and something thousand left in unallocated ARPA funds. Oh, because basically the the, alloc the allocation of some money against a potential grant, we didn't get the grant, so Correct. the money's so, now available for allocation again. Correct. Right. Okay. okay. So 177,000 and change for the town hall. Yes. Work, and that still leaves us Which with... Which would replace the two votes minus whatever the difference is, because it's like, I don't know. Right. You have to look at your spreadsheet and do the math. Yeah, yeah, it was a... I don't... Yeah, Lori's spreadsheet had the, uh, had the right amount. Oh, no, your spreadsheet had the... Uh, yeah, I broke it one. out by the two. Okay. So there's another one in there, Beth, with uh, the one with the highlighting with on the it. Highlighting on Got it. it. Yeah. So Sorry. I split it so you can see what you need to rescind. Okay. So. And then what I'm asking for is you to reallocate what it, the remaining. I I don't think I'm going to need it all, but it's better to have it than not. Okay. So we need to rescind the vote of uh, March 31st, 2023, um, for. What is it? One hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars for the town hall ballroom renovation and fire alarm system. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. Yes, yes. Um, that is what you are rescinding. Second. second. All right. All in favor of rescinding that uh, allocation of uh, revitalization money to those two projects, say aye. 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 And then uh, we'd like to, and so then we need to make a motion to allocate those funds from the existing ARPA funds. Correct. Okay, so I make a motion that we uh, allocate $180,000 from the uh, currently... You can't allocate, you can't do that much because you didn't rescind the 56. Uh, we you can only do the total. And I'm happy with 170 because I think the, okay. the re redoing upstairs is going to come in less. But, but I don't know where the... I've got okay. a $12,000 engineering project just for the fire uh, okay. hydrant so, without the fire. So I'll give, give you a motion of $170,000 in, in um, overall town hall improvements um, uh, per the earlier discussion split across the, the ballroom and the fire alarm as required to execute both projects. Second. All right. 
Uh, any discussion? Seeing as none, all in favor of 170,000 of ARPA money allocated for the town hall, ballroom and town hall fire alarm projects, uh, please say aye. 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 And so, Kelly, on the ARPA money, the 101,000 for the, um, is the Massworks project the Rice Corner Road that fell off, that fell apart, or is the No, it's the 56. Okay, the, 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 the Massworks project is the connection between East and West, East and Brookfield. That's the, the water. water. For the water system. Oh, that's the water project, okay. Okay, so that money's still tied up, but the fifty-six thousand is coming. It's is is available now. It's available for you to rescind and then reallocate. But until you rescind it, it's designated to that project, and that we did not get the grant for that okay. project. Then why don't we rescind that now and and tidy that up, and it'll just be available for allocation at a future meeting. You can do that if you'd like. All right. Uh, Could I get a motion to that effect? Uh, I motion that we rescind the culvert project earmark for ARPA money uh, for fifty-six thousand dollars. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, Kelly, was that all we needed for the... Um... That's it for the downtown recovery bill clarification. All right. Uh, Cultural Council parade permit request. Yeah, All right, I make they a motion. They haven't published the route. I, I, I make a motion that we approve the per, uh, parade permit for Sunday, September 17, 2023. I think Tom has the original. Oh, I think you all have an original. I don't know why you all have an original. I don't know who's. No, I think it's just a really good copy. I don't know, maybe. Yes, I have this. I have the one with sign here on it. His is in color. We'll sign that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so you've made the motion? Yeah. Second. All right, thank you. All in favor of approving the permit for the um, Sunday, September 17th, uh, the route being Mill Street, going up Pleasant Street to Central Street, right on Central Street to Route 9, uh, then along Route 9 to Common Street, along Common Street, then down Central Street past Town Hall, then back down Pleasant Street to the Highway Barn where they um, started. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, let me sign this so we can. Pass it along. Yes. Pass that along. Um, we have a cemetery deed to sign. Almost there, Beth. This is the last thing. Oh, you got to approve all those minutes. I'm going to keep the minutes down the table. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, we don't have to. Right. We have to have them approved by August 31st. Okay, then we're going to have to do that. And oh, oh, we have appointments. We we have appointments. Um, do you need we to? Do? No, no, no. The, we already did those. No, but, but we have Wednesday. They have to be signed. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, so just sign two. And Beth signs them. Okay. She's the clerk. All right, the hold clerk. on. We already voted them. I know. I'm just I'm just double checking the dates. Um, one difference here: we pr we approved we appointed Doug oh, for a two-year two term. Time to expire. Oh, and these are both these are both. I I will hand, I will hit line out and and there we go. initial. All right, hold on. Uh, Which makes it legal. See. Single okay, line. Holly was three years, so she's going to 2026. 20, yes. And today is the 24th. Yes. And you are not the clerk. Oh, my goodness. I'm screwing things up. All right. <laughs> <sighs> no. You're just very uh, enthusiastic and helpful. I, that's, that's the source of a lot of screwing things up. <laughs> <laughs> just, ask my, just ask me about my kids. <laughs> All right. But, uh, cemetery deed. Yeah, cemetery deed. There's, the, there's my other thing to be signed. Can see we're close to the end. Minutes. Mm -hmm. I see two things to be signed in here. Encroachment. Do you have the cemetery deed? I am finding it. Yeah, I think it's in a blue folder in your folder. And it's, I've got a blue one that says select board minutes. And this, no, I know, no, 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 I know no. I saw another sign me in here. All right, so I'll make a motion that we, where is the Can we make our uh, Thank you, Brad. Good job, Brad. 
Oh, it's okay. a, it was in a manila folder inside okay. a blue folder. All right. Um, the cemetery deed is uh, received of Ronald and Sandra Couture of South Maple Street. Um, so it looks like they're paying us for a lot in the cemetery. All right. I'll make a motion that we sign the uh, cemetery deed for the Couture's. Second. Uh, all right. All in favor of signing cemetery deed say aye. 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 All right. And just a wait. Uh, there are three mm -hmm. cemetery deeds here. It says it's a signed cemetery deed singular in the agenda. I'm okay. sorry. Um, I also have a cemetery deed here for James A. Cook and Lee Ann Daly Cook uh, for $800, and another one for Teresa Grubbs, uh, 6 Harwood Cross Road for $800. Um, could I get motions to sign both of these deeds also, please? I'll make a motion to sign uh, both deeds as read. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The agenda, so I just had the dates of the minutes right, to read off, but those. I can't find the one that had it listed. I see it's getting worse and worse. Oh, it is on there. All right, cemetery deeds are signed, and now last I'll on the agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve <laughs> the minutes of uh, August 3rd, 23, 7, 27, 23, 3, 9, 21, 3, 31, 21, 4, 9, 21, 4, 20, 21, and 7, 9, 19. Some of so those are double sets because they're executive they're session. Because they're executive session, and, and that's strictly for the approval of the minutes, not mm -hmm. for release of any executive minutes. All right. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. The, uh, we have com we've exhausted the agenda. I will take a motion to adjourn at 9.09. .09. So moved. Second. All in favor to get out of here, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.